since we're all recording and I have no idea how this would fit into any sort of regular conversation, here is the story we were talking about, all right. Sam. All right. Uh, so, Sam, mm-hmm. back in 2008, this was literally the Sunday after Thanksgiving that year. Was it really? Uh, yeah, uh, because we only d- we didn't have a full cast because some people hadn't gotten back yet from going home for Thanksgiving. I don't remember uh, that part of it. So for anybody anybody uh, uh, living in New York um, uh, or has, you might recall, you might have been to, uh, on, on East 4th Street, there is a theater called the Crane Theater, which is a pretty nice little off-Broadway house. And then above that, uh, there was, or at least used to be, a bar called the KGB Bar, which featured a lot of nice Russian beers. And then above that, there used to be a little tetanus shot of a black box theater called the Red Room, uh, which is where we were doing a show. Which, like, to get up to this place, you had to go. Do you remember that staircase that was like halfway oh God, between yeah. a staircase and a ladder? I never invited my grandparents when we did shows there because it'd be no that, way that happened too. To yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> Likewise, uh, just like it, like, like, yeah, like, it was just like, how am I not getting splinters going to this theater half of the time? Uh, anyway, so that's where we were. And we were doing a dress rehearsal for uh, uh, um, it was an it was an evening of short one acts. Uh, I was in the one that you wrote, um, which was a uh, super fun. I, I really enjoyed the show. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and uh, and we're, we're having our dress rehearsal, and we start hearing screaming from the floor below us. There was a woman screaming. Uh, for help, and we all we all stop for a moment. We all froze and have that moment that you have where you go, "Is that a rehearsal for another thing downstairs?" Because there's a theater down there. Yeah, and we've been hearing noises earlier in the day downstairs. Wow, we were okay. Yeah, like just like little stuff, like like uh, people br- bringing stuff in, like you know, random noises. But then we heard breaking glass. Yeah, and it did not sound like a thing that was supposed to happen. And uh, and so again, we're hearing the screams and we all have that like, oh, is that real? Is that a rehearsal? It's like, nope, that's real. And we, and we, we rush down and uh, and uh, in, in the in the hallway, in the little hallway uh, out between the bar and the bathroom that's there, there's this dude who is I'm going to say six foot something. Um, and, yeah, like six one maybe? Yeah. Like not... Yeah. Not a giant, but like taller than either of us. Tall, blonde. I remember that. Um, and uh, and and he's got a shard of glass in his hands, and he's trying to cut his own throat. And there's oh. this really petite girl trying to stop him. And and Case and uh, me and uh, and one of the other playwrights was it Adam. No, like it, it was such a narrow hallway that it like at first I was able to get in there and then you were able once like we sort of like rotated a bit, yeah. but no one else could get in there at first. Like basically because it was we so tight. basically we're just like trying to wrestle this guy down. Uh yeah. as he's as he's as he's just trying to stab himself. And he's like, Mind your own fucking business and get out and, and uh I can Yeah, and it. he had I some success because there was a lot yeah. of blood. Yeah, and like I remember, and uh, like I, 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 like I remember one moment where, like, case, like case, you were, you like, you grabbed him from behind, and you go, "I got him," and he goes, "You don't got me," and he like throws himself backward into the window, and the window had bars on the inside, and if it didn't, I swear you both would have gone straight through. Yeah. Um, even on the outside, I would have been impaled with glass. It yeah, was like the yeah. weirdest. Th- it's the only time in my life where I've ever been like, thank God the bars are on the thank inside. Thank God there's bars on the inside. Exactly. Like it like <laughs> always before it was just like, what a weird design. And then I was like, oh, OK, that's good. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I remember there was another moment where like he was down on his hands and knees and I was on top of him and he like bucks me off and jabs himself right in the throat. And I... Mm. And I, I thought it was done, and I shouted, no! And later that night, as I'm lying in bed, I was thinking about it, and I was like, oh, man, people really shout that. I didn't know people yeah, really Yeah, yeah, both because we both shouted, because he went limp. We thought, because he went limp, and we thought it was done. We, we thought that, like, oh, my God, a person just died beneath us. Um, uh, but then, and, like, he started to pick himself up yeah, again yeah. and tried to, like, take the shard of glass yeah. and, like, pull it down on his neck. At which point I grab his hand and I slam it against the wall. Yeah. And that's when the shard of glass goes right up my hand. Yeah. Oh. And, uh, and I, I, like, I don't remember how exactly, like what I remember it ended up with, like, I was, like, he's on his stomach. I'm on his back. Um, uh, one of the other guys, uh, from our show was on his legs. Yeah. At one point I was were, kneeling on his shoulder standing. and I, 
What was that? Yeah. I was like kneeling on his shoulder, trying to like reach up to like, we were right next to the women's room and there was like all like the paper towel dispenser. And I was trying to grab that to like, like hold my hand while still keeping my weight on him. I remember like, and like, like we were on his back and you were like standing on his hand that had the glass in it. And that's, and we basically managed to hold him there. And that, that's how we were until the, the cops came and they took uh, him in one ambulance and you and the girl got in the other ambulance because you were like, like, yeah, like you, you got your hands cut pretty bad. I had sustained a tiny ass little nothing of a scratch on my arm. Like the scar that I have on my arm right now looks like I got scratched by a cat. And, but I still was just like, you know, I, I still have a, kind of an open wound with a strange suicidal man's blood on me so I still got in I was like I'm gonna go to the hospital too and just at least fucking talk to somebody get this checked out uh the moral of the story is always take a cab to the hospital if you don't need the ambulance because I got billed for that ride <laughs> like oh, 600 shit. bucks and we're and we're in the and we're in the we're in the 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 ambulance and like you no one's it's you me and the girl and uh and she's like man she looked like shell shocked and then at one point she just goes you two did really well. He's a UFC fighter. <laughs> and, oh my god! <laughs> and we we're both like, I'm glad I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. yeah, you I, might have been. I actually don't race. tell that part of the story no. unless you're with me because it's <laughs> so implausible for me to say that out loud. <laughs> you need the cooperation. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it does not work. Like it, when it's like, no, I swear to God, he was huge and like <laughs> he was a big friggin' guy, and he was a UFC fighter. Was, like was, I wouldn't call him huge. He was tall and he was lean. Right? Um, no, no. He like I said, he was a couple inches yeah, taller. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, and uh, and uh, and so yeah. So case that's yeah. So case uh, you, your your fingers are still a little messed. I'm seeing like nothing. Um, and I <laughs> I I never got his name or hers i haven't had any i don't know anything what happened to that i i don't know yep um it was a uh, it was okay. a weird night yep uh yeah i still have a pretty big scar it, a lot of it's healed but like if you look at the digit yeah you can yeah. kind of see it um and that that's actually the weirdest spot like that's like super sensitive it feels like um like pins and needles mm. when you touch it like that scar Oof. um and then the tip of that finger i have no feeling Anyway, that's it was a story. weird day. <laughs> and that that night got so weird because then they uh, like I was taken to get X-rays and then they forgot I was in the X-ray room. Oh, uh, oh. and so forty five minutes later, I'm like, "Hello, <laughs> anyone?" Yeah, yeah. They're like, "We we we didn't know what happened to you." I'm like, I, "They they said they'd be right back." <laughs> oh, oh, oh my man. gosh! Well, yeah. Hmm. And then uh, we finished dress rehearsal the next night and had a good show. No, we opened the next night. We opened. Oh, we do. Oh, we wait, the next so we day. never finished dress rehearsal. <laughs> no, well, so we did two dress rehearsals that day. We had a big chunk of time, and so we the when it occurred was actually at, right after we finished the first run, um, and we were giving notes. And that's why I was standing next to the door, yes. because all the cast was sitting on the chairs in the theater. And I was, like, going through. It's like, here's the thing I noticed. Like, here's a th- blah, blah, blah. And then, yeah, we opened the Monday after, because it was cheaper to rent Mondays. Mm. And so it was uh, it was pretty crazy. Yep. You know what else is crazy? Terminator 3. Whoa, hey, Terminator 3. Let's talk about it. (laughs) Welcome to Certain Point of View's Another Pass podcast. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. Just go to certainpov.com. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Another Pass podcast. I am Case Aiken. As always, I am joined by my co-host, Sam Alisea. Hello, fanfare. <sighs> ha! Well, and we have uh, we, we we should have the real fanfare for today's guest. Uh, today we are joined by Leo Goodman. Hello, how you doing? Woo! Woohoo! Yeah! <sighs> and I say we should have this fanfare because Leo is an amazing actor who I've worked with multiple times back in the day yeah. uh, in in our New York theater scene. Depending on if the cold opening that we just recorded happens or not, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll find out what the editor does. Uh, <laughs> you may have heard a crazy story, uh, but just a, just a great actor who uh, is continuing to do cool stuff. Thank you. Such as what? Do you want to give any quick plugs? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, something so, so something that I actually shot uh, right before the world shut down. Uh, which is now airing a shot with Nickelodeon called SpongeBob DocuPants. It is a mockumentary series 
uh, about uh, iconic SpongeBob SquarePants episodes, like in the style of like like uh, you know like a, and a Business Insider episode about Eugene, the genius of Eugene Krabs, and like an unsolved mysteries thing about the Nasty Patty episode and stuff like that. Um, and it's streaming. It, it has started streaming. It's on Amazon Prime. I mean, it's like a bunch of fifteen minute episodes, and I'm in three of them. Uh, so if you're a SpongeBob fan at all. That's fun. You should definitely check that out. That's awesome. Is that with the actual license, or is it a uh, like a, a fan? Oh no no like, no! Like, like that that was no Nickelodeon made this. Nickelodeon sold yeah. with cool with that. Yeah, That's yeah. awesome. No, no, yeah. This was this was this was shot with Nickelodeon's uh, Viacom Digital Studios, um, and uh, yeah, it's on there. That's that is fantastic. Well. That is uh that sounds like a much more interesting thing than the movie that we're talking about today. Oh. Uh, oh. cuz like Pixar's <laughs> movie is like a great example of one that is uh blah um yeah. Today we're talking about Terminator 3: The Rise of the Machines. The sh- machines rise in this movie. Yeah. They do. Yeah, and I, I was saying before we started recording, this is the only Terminator that I've actually seen in theaters. Really? Yeah. Because two came out in 1991, which was a, a, I was a little too young That's for that tr- one. A two came out when we were in like middle school, or I, when, I, when I was or, or in high school, or something. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then this is the reason why I've had a hard time getting excited about future Terminator properties. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Makes sense. Yeah, like I I I remember I remember when 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 we decided on this one uh, for this episode and uh, and. I was I, I chose it because I was just like, oh, I remember seeing that years ago, and I don't remember much about it. I just a vague sense of disappointment. Uh, so let's check that out again and see if it's still there. And it is. Uh, there's, there's. I don't. I do not think. I do not think it's a terrible movie. I do not think it's no, that it's, it's not bad. Terrible. There's a lot of good stuff in this movie. The issue is that so much of this movie is making scenes that are direct callbacks to Terminator 2 scenes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that absolutely. Some, that that managed to fall flat. And it's and it's just it it's so like I I feel like this movie was a studio head said, "Let's make next Terminator. It's got to be Arnold and he's got to fight a girl Terminator." And that's what it's got to be. Be and 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 like and it doesn't have the same creative team as 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 the first two. And they're clearly trying to emulate the first two, like Terminator One and Two had the like James Cameron and uh, and other like writers I forget uh, the other names, but it was the same like it was the same writers for Terminator, same writer director for Terminator One, Terminator Two, and this one has an entirely new creative team. I think like one of the producers was the same, uh, and that's that's pretty much it. Um, and so much of it, yeah, again, is just them trying to do scenes that are remember when this happened in Terminator 2 here's it happening now but slightly different and and falling just a little flat um yeah it's very nudge nudge wink wink oh remember yeah. this yep. uh, uh, uh. Mm-hmm. remember the mm-hmm. thing you loved we're doing it too but like mm-hmm. a little different yeah yep. they they definitely made that mistake there's so much patterning and then they also made an attempt at lots of attempts at humor they just a lot of the humor in this does not land. Like, it just doesn't. I actually, I will say, maybe it's because I'm older now and we have moved away from talking to the hand, but I actually did appreciate Arnold talking to the hand. Maybe it's because more of my friends make dad jokes now, and that was definitely a Terminator dad joke. Um, but, <laughs> but, like, I think, like, when this was shot, like, that was, like so old you know like we had stopped saying talk to the hand and so like it was like but now i was like oh i kind of appreciate that that was terrible and yet i'm laughing yeah eventually side so bob steps on enough rakes <laughs> so so you were saying that the dad joke was actually him saying talk to the hand i thought you meant the dad joke was arnold grabbing it and going now oh, oh yeah no that's the that's the dad joke like okay. him talking to the hand literally yeah like they, they, like, talked in the hand. Like, that was just something that was said for those of you who are too young to remember. Um, but there there was, like, him actually, like, reaching forward and, like, literally talking to the hand. Like, I started dying, and I was just like, this is terrible, and yet I'm laughing. And the so thing bad. about that moment is that it didn't make sense with him as a Terminator. Like, in Terminator 2, he's, like he says, the more time I spend around humans, the more I will learn. So unless they took the time to teach him humor before sending him back, he wouldn't have learned that yet. 
Like he wouldn't <laughs> like like there's no reason why he'd be doing stuff like that. Well, I thought it was because he was being literal for real. Yeah, like, oh, we right, just thought yeah, it was yeah. funny. <clears throat> Fair. But he was like a new robot and he was just being very literal. The guy was like, talk to the hand and he was like, Okay, I will step up to the hand. Hello, okay. I would like mm-hmm. your clothes. <laughs> That makes yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it, it's weird looking at this movie because I so I have a, a term for uh, third movies that try too hard to emulate the the movies before. It's third movie syndrome. But normally I'm talking about the they try too hard to emulate the first movie. Like normally when I discuss third movie syndrome, they make a sequel that uh, deviated in ways that they thought might be successful. And then when they make the third movie, decide, oh, shit, we should actually go back to the first one. Like, if you look at Alien 3, hmm. it is a it is that to Alien 1. Um, even if you're looking at Return of the Jedi to the first, or to Star Wars, like, it's all about the Death Star. Like, it doesn't feel at all like Empire yeah. Strikes Back. Okay. And a lot of trilogies kind of work that way. This is weirdly the one where they're like, oh, no, 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 no. The successful one was the second one. We have to yep. do that all over again. Well, and it's uh, also because Terminator 2 also had... Asp- had things that were clear similarities to the first one just ramped up a little bit. And then this one was, okay, so now we do the same thing and we ramp it up a little bit more. Going back to like like to the humor stuff that 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 falls flat and, and again in, in that in that scene that you're talking about where Arnold goes into the uh goes into the the, the, the strip club, I remember there's there's the moment where Arnold goes in there and you see the women start going crazy and then he looks at the 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 sandwich board that says it's ladies night and the camera does this quick voop over to the ladies night board that is a sitcom camera move <laughs> and yeah. then arnold look and then this the male stripper with the right clothes comes on stage and arnold twists his head and the camera does voop over to the head again same thing like that is a camera move telling the audience this is the punchline right. <laughs> and yeah. it just bothered me uh oh, muscular man walking into ladies' night. Yeah, and then uh, let, let's have some gay stereotypes with the the strippers uh, oh. or the male strippers. Like, uh, this movie feels of its time. It <laughs> really, yeah, that right that's true. It's it's very early two thousands. Yeah, yeah. Super I actually different. had to double check to see because it it felt such of its time that I was like, wait, did this come out before nine eleven? Uh, be, and it it did, and it came out in two thousand three. Um, but it, there's just this like vibe shift that occurs after nine 11, a lot of things where this hasn't quite caught up with that yet. Like clearly the script was already in like uh, being written. Maybe there were rewrites and stuff, but like, um, it, it feels like a late nineties, early two thousands movie mm-hmm. as opposed to a post nine 11, like every, everything is Brown and gray. Um, which I guess is good. Uh, I don't know. I, like, I have some thoughts about that when we get to pitches, but uh, it, it's just a weird era for it to come out in because it just doesn't feel like the kind of movie that we were interested in or even the kind of movie people were interested in making. Well, someone made it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, like, like I said, some studio said, here's a cash cow. We, we need another Terminator. Let's go ahead and do yeah, it. Yeah, it's actually fascinating to look into the production history on this one because um, there was like all the these deals going on in terms of who was trying to buy the rights to the Terminator franchise. Oh, really? And after Titanic, Cameron was like, I'm done. I don't want to do that again. Like I, I'm, I'm good and finished. And that's probably after the LSD incident. Uh, but you know, whatever. <laughs> like he didn't want to do it. Arnie wanted to do it. He wanted uh, Arnie and uh, Cameron wanted to like co buy it or like that, that's like Arnold's side side of the story because it was like only seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for the rights at one point. Uh, and wow. I say only, but like no, well, I mean for, for, Arnold for a property like that, that actually seems pretty yeah small. Right. Arnold got paid $25 million for this movie. Yeah. Like, that's... uh, Yeah, so he could have owned the rights, and that could have been a totally different franchise. But it's clear that Cameron not being involved uh, makes this movie bad, because the second Terminator movie has a lot of callbacks to the first one on purpose. It's a lot of misdirections. uh, You know, like, one of the things that's hard to remember now in the Terminator franchise is that in T2, when you're watching the movie... It's like 30 minutes in before you realize that Arnie is not there to kill John Connor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, ex- exactly. Be like like and we all knew it because we'd all seen the commercials and we all knew the ad campaigns going in. I mm-hmm. like I feel like most people kind of just were aware that that was going to be the deal with this one just because of uh, of marketing. But the way it's shot is that if you had gone in not knowing what was happening, 
it yeah until the moment that arnold actually tells john get down drop and shoots the t-1000 it's shot it it's it's done just like the first one where you could very well think the t-1000 is the good guy there to protect uh there to protect john um if, if it had been done that way this movie basically just says let's not even bother with that which i'm fine with yeah I'm it, fine it with that me part. out to do some of that though because like um having christina Locken as this like you know beautiful female terminator and part of the excuse is just like let's do the normal terminator style of showing up naked so that we can have like attractive shots from behind of her like going and stealing a car and all this stuff like it's like, come on, do we? The, Does everything the, have to be titillating? The 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 growing the tits joke. Oh yeah, and then that's that's where it gets which even didn't. Worse. Here's the thing, like that moment also did not make mm-hmm. sense at all because her the if the idea that the female Terminator can decide, okay, I need to be sexier, grow my tits bigger, that makes sense if she's about to infiltrate something. She gets pulled over by a cop. She that. That machine knows the instant she gets pulled over by the cop, oh, this guy's got a gun. I'm going to kill him and take that gun. Like, yeah. <laughs> like she's not about to talk her way out of the ticket. Like, so it makes yeah. no sense at all for her to even right. bother with doing that. And she kills everyone all the time, indiscriminately. Yeah. She, like, asks people's names, and if they don't even have the same names as the person she's looking for, she still kills them. Like, she just, like, she just runs through just killing everything, which is fine, but just an observation. She doesn't need to do anything or infiltrate anything, really, because she's just a killing machine. Yeah, it's surprising to see how much better at the whole infiltrator aspect, like Robert Patrick's T-1000 was. Like, he, in the first half of the movie, he doesn't kill a lot of people. Like, it's only when like shit, when he, like, has a lock that things start to change. But up until that point, he's like trying to gather information. He's pretending to be a cop so that they'll be like, contact me as soon as you hear anything. Like he's doing all the stuff that you would do if you were trying to be successful at killing a thing. Yeah. Like um, it, it's surprising that this, like this Terminator doesn't feel more advanced than the T-1000. Well, right. Okay. I, 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 I get it. There's, I get it. There's changes like there, <laughs> but it's just like, like, for one thing, she has a, a solid structure that they're able to attack more freely. Yeah, she's got guns built in, but, like, she doesn't seem to be better at doing all these other stuff. And also, the T-1000 was a female at points in the movie. So it's not like, oh, there's a... It's not the first time we ever had a woman Terminator. Like, that, the T-1000, which is genderless, transformed into Connor's uh, stepmom at, at yeah. one point. And also transformed into Sarah Connor. Yeah. I mean, I guess yeah. part of the thing is, like, if, if, if the Terminator has the liquid metal outside then what's the point of it having any one face more than once at yeah. all? Why would it yeah. have it? Yeah. I, I, I liked, actually, the idea that the more advanced... Because the T-1000, uh, being all liquid metal, can take any form it wants, but can only make knives and stabbing weapons. And I like the idea that the next advance beyond that is enough liquid metal on the outside that it can change its appearance but enough hardware inside that it can also hold the material to make an actual fucking uh, Mega Man hand cannon. Um, like, yeah. that makes that sense. That cannon is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't mind that part, although I will say that they, they open up a new problem in this movie by revealing the nuclear power source of the, in this, yeah. renamed T-101, but it was T-800 yeah. in the previous movies. Um, or, or rather, it's T T eight hundred Cyberdyne System one hundred one was like I think the full serial number. Uh, they they shorthand it in a way to like make it more feel even more obsolete. Uh, that he has a nuke in his chest that he uses to blow up more than one thing yep. keeps making you wonder why didn't they put a better nuke in their chest and just drop it in the city that they knew it was at and that was it. True. Uh, Good point. Exactly. Here's yeah, it. you're right. Because yeah, like you're, you're like like the the Terminator. I hadn't even thought of that. Jeez. Yeah, because Terminator in the Terminator one he could have just gotten close to see he could have gotten within a block of sarah connor and blown himself up yeah i mean at least with this movie she has multiple targets so i understand her not doing it necessarily but like yeah. it is a it, it does open up that element and i wish that they had sort of played more with that question oh. does the series ever say why only one terminator can be sent back uh, so the first one has an explanation for that particular movie, which I don't think they have a good explanation going after that point. The first one um, 
it is revealed that the Terminator was sent back was the last thing that happened before the resistance takes over Skynet and like wins. Right. Uh, so it wasn't that they needed to prevent John Connor from being a worthy adversary. John Connor literally wins the day before the movie even happens. Okay. Uh, and they're trying to change history. So he doesn't. So, so in that case, since judgment day is inevitable, which we learn in this film, why not send back multiple Terminators and terminate all those different people, you know, at the same time. It I, just seems I, like the machines are not efficient. Good point. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah, and I, I uh, when we get to pitches, I have a lot of thoughts about all that. Because it, I think that the problem this movie has and that we keep talking about is that it is just an emulation of the previous movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you said, a worse one. Like, every single thing that we have really is missing that Cameron touch of being like, oh yeah, the music's hitting just right. That thing's going to hit real hard on screen. It's going to be real fucking big. Every scene is like less dramatic. Uh, it feels lighter. Like uh, they're, at one point they're in a bathroom hitting each other with toilets. That could be really cool. And you know that if James Cameron was shooting that, those hits would feel like there was a lot of impact. Yeah. Not in this movie. The, the chase scene specifically. Yeah. The, with a crane car. Because, yeah. because the, like, um, the reason, I think it is the only reason that that scene falls flat and doesn't seem to, it doesn't feel like it works, is because there is no score for the first, it's like a four minute chase scene and the first three minutes have no score, have no music under it. If you, re, it, like in Terminator 2, when when John Connor's on the scooter and Arnold's on the motorcycle and the C-1000's in the truck, there's that driving ticket 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 driving up and arnold mm-hmm. gets down into the gully with them and suddenly it starts and it start like the music basically starts to go here comes the heroic moment and arnold goes and grabs john connor and it does the ba 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 for a second here's the heroic moment and and the entire scene has that thing driving under it and then the chase scene in terminator 3 is just Foley sound effects. There is no music under it until the moment that Arnold grabs the fire truck and goes, now I'll drive, and suddenly the music, the movie goes, oh yeah, music, and starts playing some, some score under it. Yeah, I have to admit, I found that chase scene pretty boring. <laughs> That's probably why. I was just like, I'm bored now. It's like they, they upped... The, they upped the action and they upped the explosion factor and forgot to put in the thing that just like makes it really hit you in the in, in, in the heart which is which is a lot a lot of the time is the sound a lot of the time is the music it, it, it's such an important aspect of films yeah yeah, yeah. And, and I feel like they're missing a lot of opportunities like this movie is set in 2005 uh, just like how so it's it's 10 years after. T2, which was set in 1995, even though it came out in 1991. And I feel like we missed an opportunity to have a conversation about, like, actually where the projected future would go. Like, when they uh, they present this world where Skynet is inevitable, uh, that everything is going to happen, even though we pushed it back from the original date of Judgment Day being 1997. Um, I, like, could, like... I am shocked that there is no no commentary about the changing geopolitical landscape that would enable Skynet. Like it, the original Skynet occurred because we were in the Cold War, hmm. um, and even when they get to Judgment Day or when they make Judgment Day, and like that status quo had shifted, they said, "Well, but they're still there, and there's still a lot of nukes. So if they fire on the Russians immediately, the Russians fire back, everything gets wiped out." Like it made sense, but the, it, it was bred out of cold war era, like paranoia. Like it, it kind of feels like that star Trek episode where they have the computer that like, just tells you how many people would die because it's been a cold war. That's just gone forever. Um, yeah. Like the, like that's the paranoia that created the first one. And then the second one was still using it because that was still sufficiently there. But if you're going to shift it now so much further beyond, like I, I wish they talked about it. I wish they were like, well, now we are trying to implement drones. We are trying to do all the things that happened in the real world in the wake of 9-11, like that the war on terror yeah. is creating the situation, that the Patriot, like, you know, 2003 is late enough that that commentary had started to occur. Yeah. You know, 24 was well underway at this point as a show. Like, like they're at least having conversations about that kind of thing. Um, 
and so t- talk about how that changes the world. And this movie doesn't at all. They're just like, oh, all you did was kick the can. Man. Mm-hmm. It's amazing how I'm just so far removed from that 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 part of it didn't even friggin' occur to me. Like, that's so long ago, and it's been just the thing for... <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, the status quo has been the status quo yeah, for a while. Yeah. 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 Oi. Oh, also, the, the TX is a terrible design. I hate the robot face of it. Like, Oh, oh uh, once 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 the human face goes away? Yeah, I, ha- yeah. I hate it. Like, yeah. it, it looks mm-hmm. like needlessly, like, it has, like, needlessly feminine qualities to it. Uh, and also needlessly kind of alien sort of components to it, or like alien in, in features. Like the the classic Terminator is so good because it lo- it looks like a skeleton. Yeah. Like yeah. it's so perfect for that reason. It also shouldn't be what they use for all the robots. I hate every time they show the future and all the robots are the T eight hundreds. Yeah. Because why? Like those are those are only there so you can either put rubber or human skin on it and have it walk into your base. Yeah. Like the, the robots that are like walking around killing shit should always be like more like what they show at the end of this movie. Like that was kind of good that they had that. Which, and, 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 and in, in Terminator one and two, when they have those scenes in the future, there is a mix. There's a mix of T of, of, uh, of skeleton Terminators and also the things on the treads with the miniguns yeah, going around. Yeah, yeah. Tanks and airships and all that. Yeah. Like, uh, and I, I, I do want to say that the the third act of this movie has a lot going for it, at least in terms of upping the stakes mm-hmm. by having her take over the prototype of the Terminator program. Like, I think that's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Can I, can I, I'm going to bring up another, another, another thing where they, where they were like, well, let's bring this over from Terminator 2. And it didn't make sense that they did it in the scene where, um, where they're in the cemetery and Arnold takes the minigun and starts driving the cops away and mm-hmm. makes sure not to kill any of them. Why? I thought about that, too. I imagine that they actually said they put those pro- like provisions in place. Why? Uh, before they sent them back. Why? I, I... No, 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 seriously. Because Catherine Brewster, who is, you know, second to command and presumably first in command when John dies who is also a mother, is sending a Terminator back in time to protect her, her husband, and by effect, their unborn children. She's Mama Bear protecting the family. And any stipulation she puts on him makes his mission harder. Why would she tie his hands? In it to, Why would she make his mission harder by telling him that he can't kill anyone that, as far as she is concerned, are all going to die in less than 24 hours in a nuclear explosion? Every Ooh, single person yeah. that he encounters other than her and John Connor is dead. Uh, you know what? That's actually an interesting point, mm-hmm. and I kind of wish I had thought about that. Uh, because I, I just like did a hand wave on this. And this was yeah. an era where Schwarzenegger was trying to cut down on the amount of violence. Um, this is about the same time he said that he would no longer do posters where he's holding a gun. Um, he, he just felt that he had contributed too much to a culture of violence, which... Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is a complicated figure uh, in terms of <laughs> That's s- putting it social lately. views. But I am constantly fascinated because he does think about stuff. Um, I, it, like, I, you know, he, he's a weird, not easily defined, like, political figure, uh, social figure. Uh, but he, like I said, he, he actually does think about these things. Um, and, like, I find myself agreeing with him sometimes and disagreeing with him other times. Um so I get that. But you know what? You're totally right, yeah. because it would have been great if they had a scene where yeah. John tries to tell it you're not allowed to kill something. And he says, I you are not able to com- command me. I have a directive not to listen to you about that. Who who said her? Yeah. Yeah. That would have been great. And, and, and again, it, it's 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 the aspect of of they're all going to die in less than a day anyway. And even without that, this is a mother protecting her kids. She is going to say, you kill every single person you have to to keep us alive. Yeah. And, 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 and so all that scene becomes is it's, it's such an obvious callback to the scene in Terminator 2. And it just doesn't, like, for so many reasons. Terminator 2, it's at night instead of the day. So just the visuals are a bit different. He's above them shooting down 
Uh, so it makes it, he's got a bigger gun. Um, <laughs> and, and, and he's also got that, like, it makes sense in that moment in Terminator 2 that he should be keeping them all alive and it doesn't in, 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 the, in, in this one. Uh, and just everything about it just, yeah, just, just like, if you're going to yeah. do the obvious callback, you have to make it different in some way. Yeah. And, and, and that's my problem with this whole movie. And especially since Catherine went through the trauma of, and we learned this when they're in, in the truck, um, she must have watched her husband have this fondness for this, this cyborg who walked in looking like the one that saved him, and then he got killed. Yeah. So, like, she knows that these, like, she knows that the Terminators can change forms. Any one of those Terminators can act, any one of those cops could be a Terminator. So I don't think that she would actually at all. She would just be like, trust no one, just save us. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. the only directive. This woman has been dead centuries, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a bummer um, that this is the movie that we got. And because, like, like I said, I this is the only one I saw in theaters because I loved Terminator 1 and 2. Like, Terminator 1 is one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. Uh, Terminator 2, I constantly forget how good it is until I rewatch it. I'm like, oh, my God. It's amazing. Like Terminator One is great, and it's and 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 it's important to say that Terminator One is great because Terminator Two is so much better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it has to be like Terminator Two just turns it up to such an epic scale uh, for all these. And and again, I'm going to bring up music again. Um, you both watched Terminator Three. Can you hum me the 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 hero theme from it? Is there a theme in the movie? Terminator nope. Two. Ba, 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 ba. It's such a simple song, mm -hmm. but it has that heroic, epic quality, and a movie like this needs that. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Mm. And 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 yeah. I also want to uh, bring up my like, like because we're, we're talking about all these all the all the ways in which um, in which this movie is clearly like could have been so much more different it could have been such a different i mean there there's an argument and, and since you said that since you're talking about your pitch wanting to to be very different like there's an argument to be made that john connor didn't even need to be in the movie at all like since they the, since they since the actions of terminator 2 it could be judgment day is inevitable and when it happened someone else survived and became the leader uh there's like, yeah. there's so much different stuff that could be done but again, I'm I, I go and and I'll and when we get into my pitch, I'll you know be, be going with this because I'm going with the idea that there's a studio head saying it has to be Arnold, it has to be John Connor, it has to be a girl Terminator, and that's what they're going with. And so, with all that being the stipulation, my biggest issue with the thing is that John Connor is fucking useless the yeah. entire film. You're telling me that this is the guy who spent his entire life training to be a mythical warrior and yeah. and and leader of the human resistance when he's a kid in terminator 2 he can do shit he's hacking into atm machines when when they're getting attacked by the t-1000 in the car it's his mother and the terminator that are shooting at the t-1000 but he instantly goes into ammo mode he's like taking the weapons and checking the clips and putting it all together he's doing stuff he's getting involved and and now as an adult he just whines the whole time yeah, yeah, yeah I, I'm okay with him uh, starting off a little broken, um, uh, you know, kind of losing his way after losing his mom. Um, but there was no actual, like, growth into something else. Like, I'm okay with where he started. Because you could say, like, um, Sarah's dead. Sarah was a very driving force. The future that was supposed to happen never happened. So a lot of times, even... I think the internet talks about this a lot when people are gifted as children, the oh, disappointment yeah. of getting older and realizing that you're just like everyone else. Uh. But like from, from a very young age, he's told like, you have this purpose, da, 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 da. And so he could find it as like, it's useless. Um, but I was like, but he still, I mean like, and there's like traces of like the trauma of being told that you have to be careful all the time. So I'm kind of okay with where he starts, but the fact that he never, like, kicks in. Like, I was just like, this is Sarah Connor's kid. This is fucking Sarah Connor. Like, this is not Sarah yeah. Connor's kid. Yeah. Like, right. who he, is he this He only kid? kicks into it at the very ending of the movie when he's already at this, like... How so? What, is it, what does he do? Like, he turns on the magnets. That's it. 
I, I know it's, that's that's it and but it's not it's that, not like, enough like he it's he not needed, enough there and it should have happened earlier it, it should have happened happen, at the break into three but yeah it had to happen much much earlier and and then he gets into the place and he and he yeah and he picks up the thing and they go who's in charge i am and no one goes the fuck are you right yeah Why are, i mean <laughs> i i think also like I, like if if you had to pick a moment um and this feels like pitchy to ther- like you know territory but if you had to pick a moment when the Terminator, like, pulls out the fucking casket, and this is, like, his mom's, like, last dying request, that her her ashes be spread somewhere else, but she should leave behind a casket of weapons. Because <laughs> she's always fucking prepared. That should be a kick in his ass. Like, he should be, like, grabbing that shit and, like, trying to load up. Like, I, I appreciate, I guess, that they give a moment to Claire Danes to be all, like... Uh, I'm gonna try to escape this person that I. She wasn't even tied up. That's besides the point. Um, but <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> I was just like, you walked willingly in, right? And then all of a sudden, you see the weapons. But there's enough weapons for everyone. You're gonna grab it. You'd be like, get out of my way! And it's like, I get it. They just want to do like the shot and the tooth and like, haha, the Terminator can catch the bullet. But I don't know. It just didn't work for me. Um, but this should be like a moment for him, right? Because like. If anything, Sarah has always directed his life. Like, Sarah taught Mm -hmm. him everything he knows. Sarah has... So, like, this is, like, a message from mom. Like, we thought it was over, but clearly it's not. Yeah. I made provisions. I made fucking provisions, kid. Get off your ass. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Like, that should have been a turning point in the movie. That's true. Yeah. You know what I would have loved to happen in that scene is if she just shot the Terminator and it ricocheted off his head and hit John. <laughs> and then it was all yeah. about Catherine. <laughs> just because that's that's what I was thinking when he when she's pointing at him is is he's is why isn't he going? No, don't do this. John Connor's in the room. <laughs> yeah. God, but that's no, that's true. Uh, that should kick his ass with and Sarah is like. Yeah, that thing. I mean, I think it's okay for like in the beginning of the film for 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 John to feel empty and for him to feel broken. And I think that's mm. okay. But I think that like the fact that he waits so long to kind of accept things, like it's like, bro, you've like clearly been waiting for this all of your life, right? Like you've been like adrift since your mom died and since this future didn't happen. Now the future's happening and you know what's going to happen. So why are you just, why are you still fighting it? Like, I don't yeah. understand. Like, I feel like he should have come to his acceptance much earlier. Yeah. Like, this, yeah, I mean, the scene where, where, the, where, where he starts uh, saying, why me? I'm not the guy you want. I'm not the guy you want. And the Terminator has to grab him by the throats and be like, anger is, is, is more useful than despair. Yeah, but that like him having that moment of despair right there just, 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 just falls flat and is just irritating. When it's just like you've seen too much to not believe at this point. Also, I just felt like it was very. Um, I felt like uh, I I don't know how old he's supposed to be here, but I felt like he was like playing a fifteen year old, and Claire Danes was playing someone like in her late in her late twenties. <laughs> like I just felt like he was like really stunted. <laughs> like like I was just like, okay, I get it. Like you've lived this <laughs> life where you're like always transient and shit like that, but like. You're, you have the complaints of an adolescent boy right now. Like, you, you could be angry and be like, I don't fucking want this shit. Like, you know, give it to someone else. Fine. But like, I'm not the person you're looking for. I'm not good enough. Kid, you've always known. You've known since the minute you were born. You were trained for this for the minute you were born. You may want to reject that. Like, maybe you want to be like, you know, this is bullshit. And maybe like, that's a better way to go. Like... And I've toyed with this a little bit. I don't know if this is actually my pitch, but I've toyed with it a little bit. Like, like John, like after his mom died, nothing happened. He joins the real world. He's like, what the fuck? Because like, honestly, there's two ways that John's could go, right? He could, he could just become a computer analyst, get a real job, go to college. He saved the world. Like, um, so I don't know. I just, there's just so many things that you could have done with him and he just seems so wasted in this film. 
what what's the other? You 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 said there's two ways John could go. He could be a computer oh, analyst saying we save uh, the world. No, th- the way that they did, like in terms of being like broken and then okay. have him wake up. So like still like the gifted child syndrome, and then <laughs> realize that he's you know step up earlier in the movie. Yeah. Um, and instead they just kept him flat throughout. And I mean, it's fine that they gave Catherine more of a like a leadership role. I'm I'm fine with that. But like, it was just kind of, I don't know. Yeah. So, so John Connor in this, if you're going off of the previous movie, is supposed to be twenty, um, as is Kate, which is weird. Um, the the writer apparently head canoned it, canoned it to uh, twenty three, uh, because so Edward Furlong was supposed to be ten in. Uh, in T2, um, uh, but he's a little bit older. I think he was actually 13 when they filmed it. So they they were like, well, he he was older, so maybe it's a 23-year-old character. Because um, if you go off the timetable, it's 85 is the first movie, and then it, the T2 takes place 10 years after that, uh, and then uh, this movie takes place 10 years after that. So is she I just a vet tech? <laughs> is she so, just a vet well, tech? Again, for a long, a little did, bit older. How did she get through all that education? I'm sorry. I'm like I, I, I'm like really like bothered by that. Like even a vet tech has to go to school for like four years. Her her right, father yeah. pulled a lot of strings. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's true. That's that's true. I mean, I get the idea of having him be underground so that he is not the target, and that works either way because he could also be using like a fake identity. He he's a good hacker. He could like maybe he could be a student and like be, you know, under a uh, under a fake name. Um, or they go with this whole, like, I'm a junkie hiding away kind of whatever deal that the character has. Like, this, like, PTSD story, which, I don't know. I mean, honestly, there would be a certain amount of trauma from his experience in T2. So I'm okay with him being, again, I'm fine with him having trauma. I'm fine with him wanting to lay low. I'm fine with him being a paranoid human being. It's just... He's also got to know how to like do shit. Like, yeah. he can't just be yeah. sitting in the background whining, and like depending on his like robot servant. Like it felt like he had a butler. <laughs> like that's what Arnold Schwarzenegger was. Like, oh, robot butler, go defeat those cops, but don't kill them. Let's just get out of here. <laughs> yeah. But like it's interesting to look at all of the Terminator sequels after two because they're all bad in very different ways. This one is just has zero ambition. Like it's, uh, it's I, a Gen X slacker. Years. Like it, it's that's the classic thing that we're dealing with right now. Like it's just doing all the beats from T two, but worse. Um, but it feels like part of that original chunk of movies because it's T three, uh, whereas the other ones have have subtitles with no number. Um, and Arnie is still a bit younger, so it works a little bit better as like like he's fifty four in this movie, which is cra- crazy. But he, you know, he still looks like the Terminator. Like he, yeah, he got into shape sufficiently. Um, then with the next the next three are weird in different ways. Salvation I think is a good idea as a setup, but like I it was so panned as just being a bad movie that I've never actually watched it. <laughs> So what, so what's the setup? I, Salvation I, I is set in the in the post apocalypse, as as mm. it should be. It's about time yeah, to get there. Yeah, yeah. It's Christian Bale as John Connor trying to like lead the resistance in this era after after Judgment Day. Uh, Genesis is a time travel story full of recasting and like continuity nods. It feels like fanfic uh, or like a fan film. It feels like the Star Trek movies that I've worked on. Like it's just. Not, you know, it's just like, oh, don't you love all this stuff? Uh, <laughs> and the fact that everyone's recast makes it worse. Like, I, it just... I, I haven't seen that, but I've seen the, the time travel snake episode of Rick and Morty. And I feel like if I were to watch Genesis, there'd be a lot of moments of like, oh, that's what I, that was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and then Dark Fate is the one that we were talking about where it's like, well, the timeline is different. We get to the same result, but it's a, it's different people. It's not Skynet. It's a different thing. There, it, this one has been sent back to not go after John Connor. It's going after someone else. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, yeah. Also haven't seen it. The only one I've... Uh, so I've seen now... I, I've seen the, the original three, and I've seen Genesis. I actually haven't seen either Dark Fate or Salvation, um, both of which have better-sounding ideas, uh, but none of them have been successful since Terminator 2. Mm. They just can't capture that magic. Man. I mean, I feel like... James part Cameron. of the thing 
the fact, part of the thing though, is like by, by setting up the fact that like judgment day is inevitable and that, that, you know, that, that these, these things cannot be prevented or stopped. It really just sets the tone for failure overall in the movies. Like at least in the first film and, and the second film, you got to have hope at the end of it. Right? Like there is no hope for this. So like, it's actually like, look, this is actually a fine movie. Like if there were no Terminator one, no Terminator two, it'd probably be like an okay action film. You'd be a little bored at times, but you'd, you'd get some good special effects. You'd have decent acting. You'd have some really bad jokes, but you'd be like, whatever. And you could turn it on in the background and clean your house to it. You'd be fine. But because Terminator one and Terminator two exists, this film is blah because yeah. you've got something that's like so amazing. And the thing is, is that Sarah Connor, well, in both movies, but Sarah Connor, especially in the first movie, because it's mostly focused on her, she's kick ass. She's amazing. And you've got, and she like feels, you feel like she figured it out. She's protected humanity. She's protected her baby. You feel like, you know, like, uh, yeah, maybe there's a hint, but she's, she's given hope. She's hope to humanity and she's saved this child. And in the second movie, they bring down everything. And in fact, you know, this guy who, this Terminator who ha sacrifices his life and they have to say goodbye to him, even though, I mean, it's kind of like Homeward Bound or Free Willy, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. you know, like, oh no, my Terminator friend, be free now, except he's going to death, but it's still hopeful. And that great score is playing behind it while it's happening, swelling your emotions, knowing that, that this sacrifice has been made for humanity. In this film, that does not happen. No. It doesn't happen. It ends in a very nihilistic, like, well, at least we survived. And that's supposed to be the hopeful thing. But John sucks in this movie. So it's <laughs> not actually hopeful. Yeah, and you know uh... that eventually he dies and that his wife has to send someone back to save his ass again. How many times do you have to save one guy's ass? Really, honestly. You got to wonder, though, will it go the same way now that he goes into the future knowing, OK, the next time I see that model Terminator, it's definitely about to kill me. Like, yeah. like that. Like you got to figure that 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 moment in the future happens differently now yeah 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 it's also interesting with the time travel thing so the first movie is supposed to be a closed loop um the the time travel that occurs all is uh predicting the things that actually happen in the future so like the photo that they take at the end of the movie yeah. and the conception of john connor both happen so that in the future john connor can give the photo to uh, to reese and send him back in time to conceive himself yeah and probably thought it probably knew about that um so like that whole timeline, we everything plays out. There's no, there's no history changing because of time travel. Yeah, it, it's just uh, all paradox. You know how like this is how this is how, but but this is how it happened. Yeah, right. And then two um, actually allows for a change of the future. Um, it introduces that as a possibility where they completely fix everything. This movie then doesn't really have like a real statement on it. It's just shit got moved. It's like. It's just so lazy. Yeah, absolutely. And and then, like, really, honestly, I feel like, <laughs> honestly, the end, the way that they constructed it was just like, all right, guys, so this movie, we bought this property so we can actually make 10 more movies. So we have to end it where everyone is <laughs> fucked. So we have to make more movies. Yeah. Like, I really feel, like, deep down, like, that is why... It ends the way it does. And I, I actually don't have a problem with the third act. Like, I think it's actually, like, where the movie moves the best and is the most, like, compelling. And, you know, I, I actually feel like it was a, a nice moment to know that, that the Terminator yet again sacrificed himself. And Like, I mean, he tricked them. But it yeah. was, again, he completed his, his mission. He protected them. So I was like, oh, that's a nice touch. Like, I actually thought, like, there the the adding that he was the type of robot that showed up to kill him and that's why the wife I was like oh that's good because like it actually tells us why this older model 
is coming back again. Yeah. It's like he came in to the camp, killed you. They captured me, reprogrammed me, sent me back here to save you exactly. right now. Yeah, because actually, because actually, uh, that's the, the point with that uh, that you're bringing up is that it in, in Terminator 2, it makes no sense that they have an Arnold model. Yeah. Like, we know that other Terminator models exist because in Terminator 1, they have the scene in the future where where the other term where the Terminator infiltrates their base, and it doesn't look mm -hmm. like Arnold. So we know that many different models exist. It's actually a plot point in Terminator One that yeah, Reese that doesn't, doesn't know what exactly. the Terminator's going to look yeah. like he, until he sees. Yes, it. he said. Yeah, he, he says I, I couldn't I couldn't make I couldn't I didn't know who it was until he made a move on you because they could look like anyone. This is the only one of them that actually makes a point of explaining why he looks like Arnold fucking Schwarzenegger. Right. So yeah. that's a point in his favor. Uh, I'll also say another point in his favor is, you know what? I really like the Terminator on Terminator fight in the in the last one. The last yes. one when they're fighting with each other. The way that the ter the way that the TX moves where where like the moments where I re the moment that I rewound and watched several times because I just I, I loved it was when Arnold's grabbed the TX from behind and the TX oh, just yeah. wraps its legs around and turns his torso around and turns his head around and then and then has it uh was yeah, was just, just like a king burning his face she was like yes. I'm just gonna light your face on fire <laughs> that was really good I also liked the moment um where um the TX was the boyfriend in the back of the cop car. I thought that that was pretty, like, that was pretty good. It was pretty solid. And, like, the hand going through, like, yeah. straight through the the um, the car seat and the cop. And the, the way that the, <laughs> the partner reacted, I was like, A plus acting. This is the best acting of the yeah. film. Oh, shit! Like, that was amazing. Because that's, like, a real reaction. And I loved it. Also, yeah. also uh, going back to with the boyfriend as well with the fiance. Fiance wakes up in bed and the TX is sitting on the bed and just the torso turns around. So there's something yeah. about that that mm -hmm. is just such exorcist style creepy. That's yeah. just a, a great, just skeevy yeah, moment. Yeah, we, we should probably give some shout outs to the cast in this movie mm -hmm. or at least the, discuss them. Christina Locken as the, as the TX, I think. Uh, is actually pretty good casting. I, I have some issues with the way they try to sexualize her in yes. Edward spots, but yeah. um, in terms of like, she apparently did like a lot of mime training to get like weird body motion kind of stuff down oh, for it. Really? Like, huh. like really, and like, like they play it up really well. Like we we just keep talking about all this like body stuff she's doing that I think really sells the alien nature of the character. So you're saying yeah. that that actress can really just turn her torso around? That's I mean, obviously amazing. it's exaggerated, but like it's it's it they do good stuff with it. Like they make the effects like she sells it, I is I yeah, guess. What yeah. I'm saying. yeah. That, okay. I also that, thought that most of her facial expressions were really great as as the Terminator. I really I, I, I liked her. I like I liked um what she did with it. Um except for the weird sexualization that they did. It's a new hot Terminator. <laughs> Are you talking about like like what like when she it makes sense that she dips her finger in blood and tastes it to to analyze that that makes sense but the way yeah. she puts her finger on her mouth in the ultra blowjobby way is just like why are mm -hmm. you doing it like that machine well and then she like it's hot for it yeah She's yes like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah uh, but but overall i think she was fine and i think this is probably more of a direction thing for her yeah. that like yeah. those are the limitations uh was anyone else like really distracted by claire danes you mean like, you mean just because she's claire danes Exactly. Like I no. just could, I couldn't, I, th I couldn't separate her from being Claire Danes. I, th I think there were definitely moments I was writing in my notes and instead of writing Catherine, I wrote Claire, but there's both, those are both C names and my family is notorious for, you know, messing up people's names. So it might just be a genetic thing. Sorry, Claire. You know, what? Um, I, I said, I wrote Arnold in every single one of my notes. So I didn't <laughs> write T101. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. No, T-800 Cyberdyne System Model 101. <laughs> Every single time. You have to write it that way. <laughs> I think in the in the first, like, maybe, like, the first few scenes, I was like, oh, Claire Danes. Oh, hi. And then it was just kind of like, oh, okay, let me, um, yeah. But I, I think, like, as the it. movie went out, she was fine. And she was, I mean, yeah. this was before, like, Homelands. Like, this was, uh... Right, like, like, like she, she yeah. was. Yes, yes. The the TV show I've never watched is had not actually come oh, out okay. yet at this point. But my yeah, point, like, she... like she was she was big enough. Like, 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 like this this was this was uh, uh, before the thing that like got her all the awards. But she was still like definitely big enough to be like a draw 
um, like it made sense yeah. for her to be there. And I thought she did a but great she job. But she wasn't. Yeah, yeah, she she wasn't an actress who did a lot of action films, and that's fine. Like, um, I th- I thought I thought that it was I thought she was fine in the role. You know, there were yeah. there were a couple yeah. of moments where I was just like, oh, but other than that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it threw me a little bit. Like it, like there there's never a spot where I stopped thinking about it being Claire Danes. I think overall she was mostly fine. It is weird that she seems to be um, further along in her career than she really should be. Yeah. Uh, just as a person, like she seems to be uh, significant. Others, I forget, were they married or was it just like her? Like, her they fiance. were engaged. Her that was her fiance. Yeah. Yeah. They were getting yeah. ready if, for their even wedding. If she's supposed to be twenty three. It's like it felt like a little off uh, in terms of the timeline. Man. Um, but overall, like yeah, yeah, she's she's a fine actress in general. Overall, fine. Um, Nick Stahl. Um, most of the issues I think are writing issues. I I didn't really mind the recast overall because it's supposed to be a big enough time jump that yeah whatever uh, like edward furlong mm-hmm. was, would actually be the right age uh for this because they just like yeah 12 years later do we know why they didn't go with edward furlong? um i think it was a contract thing although i know furlong has gone through some personal stuff and i don't think he's like like he, he came back for the most recent terminator but like uh i don't think he has really uh been as big of an actor mm. Mm. especially not in this era I, yeah, I thought I thought Nick Stahl was I thought it was good. It's like all like 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 that's the thing. Like all we got so many problems with with him, and someone was just like, I don't know if is that his acting or is that just him being given this weird ass direction and writing, like uh, like I mean the moment of yes, it all makes sense now. There's only so much you can do with that. Like yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have to wonder if it was Furlong, if he would have had those moments of like, no, I should be trying to help here. Like, I should be doing the things that I did in the previous movie. You mean like how uh, Linda Hamilton completely said, no, we have to change how you wrote my character in Terminator 2? Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> like Sam, you know what we're, what we're talking about? Yes. Yes, I yeah. do. For, 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 for anyone listening, that, 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 that if you're wondering, it's just that Linda Hamilton, like when they, when they did Terminator 2, apparently the original script... Uh, had her basically like the same character in Terminator 1. And Linda Hamilton was just like, fuck no, I would be a badass and probably in a mental hospital. And yeah. and, and that's how it, that's how it became. Uh, yeah, maybe yeah. for a long would have done the same thing. She, she had to sell, like, no, I will work out so hard, guys. And she did. And she before did. Before the Marvel movies. She, she like, looks amazing. amazing. Yeah. yeah. She looks like someone who's, who's spent the past 10 years convinced the world is going to end and she has to be able to protect it. Like... And yeah. train her. You know, that's the other thing. I was like, I felt like even if even if he's a gifted child that got like lost along the way, I feel like he would be like more adamant about working out the way his mom did. And this is not yeah. to body shame. <laughs> I'm not body shaming the actor. But I feel like even if you're like living on the run or that kind of thing, I just feel like he like John would have made sure to like do a hundred sit ups a day, a hundred push ups a day. Like he would have been one of those people that he would be constantly training for war all of yeah. the time because that's how you were raised. I mean, like I imagine that like growing up, that's something that like Sarah would have had her kids do. Like, okay, all right, it's after dinner. Now we're gonna talk about how to disarm a person. Come over here, you know, like. <laughs> And, and he would have kept up with it too, especially if, especially if we're going with the idea that he has been living off the grid just in case another robot comes back in time after him. So he's still right. living with the idea that it may still happen. So he's still going to be preparing for it. Exactly, which is why I think like you could have gone the opposite direction, where this kid who's like been really good at everything ends up being a hacker who hacked his like identity to become a college student instead because like mm, it makes more yeah. sense for him to like let go of it because he's like we saved the world mom died i'm going to move on with my life and live a normal life that almost makes more sense and is more interesting to like i believe that this still might happen i'm running away from fear which is still valid it's a valid choice but then like you're not doing anything actively other than staying off the grid you're you you don't have supplies or weapons on you at all times like i I don't know he just he's so unprepared how is this sarah connor's child yeah 
Yeah, like he doesn't have a network of people to work with the yeah. way that he did in the second one. It's I, it's and, weird that we just like remove all the 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 buffs. I mean, that, that was her accumulated. network. That was her network. Yeah, but but he knew them. They were happy to see him. But but honestly, that would be his network, right? Like True. like why wouldn't she pass that on? Why wouldn't why wouldn't if these people believe Sarah, why wouldn't they believe in John? John John has been set up, right? He's the chosen one. He's the person that's going to bring salvation. He's going to bring humans out of this horrible oppression by robots. And these people believe in it. So why would they just be like, Sarah's dead now. Bye, kid. Was it ever actually established that 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 those people in Terminator 2, was it ever actually established that that they knew why she was the way she was? I don't... I forget if they were just regular doomsday preppers or a yeah. specific doomsday prepper. Um, <laughs> doomsday versus judgment day preppers. Uh, but, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. I mean, he still had a, he had a network of people who had plenty yeah. of guns and were happy to see him when he showed up. Yeah. Like, it's weird that he doesn't have anything like that in this movie. Like, yeah. he should he should have, like, a bunch of, like, crazy people with underground bunkers that let him... Cur- like couch surf all of the time like that's how you should like be getting by like weird physical day jobs and like bouncing from doomsday well judgment day preparers to judgment day preparers one last thing i want to talk about before we move on to pitches is i think that the positioning of this movie has hurt the franchise a lot it coming out and being as lackluster as it is uh, has screwed over each one because literally every Terminator movie has had some critics being like, no, the franchise is back to being good now. Uh, and then everyone's like, is it as good as T2? And then it's not. And then they hate it. Uh, like, that's how it goes every time. The cycle just keeps on happening. It's like Judgment Day. It's just inevitable. Uh, like, this this movie being bad has meant that what are fundamentally good ideas for movies, like, I don't know if I love doing a time travel movie with a full recast, but there's some good ideas going on in there. Um, like the setting it post judgment day. Also great idea. History has changed. The inevitable stuff is happening, but now the details are different. Also great. All of those would have been good things that it's hard not to talk about when we're talking about how this movie could have been better. Cause each one of those is a better pitch. We're not even going to mention uh, summer glow as a Terminator helping. John. Oh Connor yeah. That's, all, that's the other thing. Which is arguably the best Terminator thing after Terminator 2. <laughs> I only saw like one or two episodes of that. But it's praised like crazy. And it has Lena Headey as Sarah Connor. And she's great in it. Like, obviously, the first two movies are the best. Like, that's yeah. uh, that's just always going to be the, the, the big problem with the series is that it peaked so early. Um, and then they haven't come out that frequently. So, I don't know. You just you, Everyone just remembers those first two. Uh, and that's about it. It's like every I mean, now and then they is... make a Terminator movie and people are like, maybe this is going to be the one. I, right. I think yeah. that's what it is. They're waiting for you to forget the pile of crap they served you. So they're waiting a few years, like every like five to six years. You, they try to clean your memory. And then like they're like, it's a Terminator film. And you're like, oh, yeah, I remember Terminator. Terminator 1 and Terminator 2. And then you go and see it and you're like, oh, my God, that was terrible. So I think that's what's happening. Yeah. They're just waiting for you to forget. It's a paradox. Uh, it's a time loop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're waiting for you to forget, but you can't forget unless you remember what you need to forget. And that's the paradox. Uh, yeah. 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 I just lost the game. You did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know why that one triggered it. Okay. <laughs> Wait, can, can I, can I, can I also say uh, one more thing? Uh, and yeah. this is the thing, just, just in, in the vein of, in the vein of how much of this movie is callbacks to Terminator Two that ultimately don't work quite as well. So to me, it is fully enco- it, it, it encapsulated in the line, "Get in. Do you want to live? Get in." Right. That's not the line. That's not the line. The line is, "Come with me if you want to live." And don't and 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 John Connor yeah. has been waiting his whole life to say that line. His mother told him that line his whole life growing up. And don't tell me she didn't, because when the Terminator goes back in Terminator Two, and says that to Sarah Connor, 
There's no reason it would have said that unless John Connor had programmed him in the future to say that in case he met her. So he absolutely yeah. knew the story and he absolutely knew the line. And and so it's not just fan service. It also would just make sense that that's what he would say. And it just mm-hmm. and, I, and I remember I remember, I remember just texting you this case because we when we just figured out we were going to do this and I watched this movie and I was like, I'm so mad that he just said that, that he just screwed up that line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's take a quick break to give a shout out to one of the other shows on our network and then Yay! come back and see if we can rewrite history. Okay. We've made difficult decisions. And there are still more ahead of us. Two people aren't enough to save the galaxy. We need the toughest, smartest, deadliest allies. We need you. We need you to join us. And listen to Reignite. A certain point of view podcast about storytelling. Love. And Mass Effect. Join us every other Thursday as we fight for the fate of an entire galaxy. You can find us everywhere you get your podcasts. Or at certainpov.com slash reignite. We're counting on you. We should go. And we're back. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> dun 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 dun. <laughs> That's right. Step one is getting that music back in. <laughs> exactly. As we've all ex- <laughs> talked about. <laughs> Step one. All right, Leo. You Better are the guest score. today. Um, oh. If if you were possessed of a time machine okay. and able to go back naked and then try to do your best to improve this movie. Uh, do you want to throw the first pitch on that? Sure. So, again, I'm going with the idea that the studio has basically said it's got to be Arnold, it's got to be a Terminator fight, and the other Terminator's got to be a girl, and it's got to be John Connor, and that's basically what we're going with. And going with that idea, like, like a lot of this, a lot of this is going to be going with essentially the same formula and essentially the same thing, just trying to up it and, and adjust it in little ways that, 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 that we've been talking about. Uh, so starting off, Starting with, uh, uh, it, it, instead of starting off with John Connor uh, having his, his I've Been Living Off the Grid uh, voiceover, we start in the future. We start in a future battlefield, and we, and we hear a voiceover, and it's not John, it's Catherine Brewster. It's Claire Danes, it's older Claire Danes. And she goes, six billion people, or however many billion people died on whatever the date is, Fire rained down from the sky, entire cities reduced to dust in an instant. Those of us who survived faced a new nightmare, the war with the machines. At first it was just a hunt, humans scrambling and hiding from the metal terrors that sought to render us extinct. Now the camera has come out from the battlefield into some of her makefield, make, makeshift fortress that they have, and it follows behind a soldier as she's walking along the edge of the building. We don't see her face yet. Eventually, we managed to regroup, to arm ourselves, to fight back. Heroes rose from the ashes of our civilization to show these things that humanity would not die meekly. Men and women of courage and resolve who gave their blood to protect what was left of our race. And one man in particular who didn't seem surprised. One man who helped us all figure out how to face the enemy. One man who found the strength to give others hope. The soldier has now finished her walk to stand beside another, observing the carnage outside. The camera comes around so we can see their faces, hard and determined. They're John Connor and Catherine Brewster. My husband, John Connor, who never let anyone see his fear but me. Opening credits. Credits are done. We start, uh, we go into present day, and similar, similar things. The TX arrives... And, uh, and, and takes the, and, and, and at first I kind of wanted, I was thinking of an idea of having the TX, um, um, be the one to go into the bar instead of Arnold and have to kill a bunch of dudes, except that I, I realized that the, you know, the TX can just touch someone and instantly make their clothes. So that's why you don't need the scene of the TX going in and saying, give me your clothes. What the TX really got from taking that woman is just taking the car. So she, so TX has essentially the same scene. Um, and then, and then Arnold has essentially the same scene, except playing it a little less for humor. 
Arnold goes in. Uh, we can again, like, like they clearly want to have uh, the, this joke. They go in, um, and the joke is simply the 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 changing of it in, in, in being this uh, this new thing. But it doesn't have those weird camera things. And and when he goes up uh, to 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 take the clothes uh, from the stripper. It then turns like instead of it just being nothing but nothing but joke, that scene's got to end with with people running out of there, and Arnold's just like actually beat the crap out of some folks and taking his clothes uh, again. I don't want it to be nothing but humor. It's got to turn into into the somewhat darker thing, and then he comes out. And we keep the scenes of the TX going after uh, the other kids because I like those and I think they work. Um, and now we go to Catherine Brewster. And she is working not at a veterinary place, but at a hospital. Um, and she's a machine tech at a hospital. She's she's working with the machines. Um, and she's at work on a late night shift. Arnold, that double crossing bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, but the point is to to make her someone who knows some stuff about working with machines. I know it's yeah. just funny that you said it. She's Fair working enough. with the machines. Fair enough. Yes, <laughs> true. Well, this is before she's learned. This is before she's yeah. learned the error of her ways. Uh, and Arnold arrives there, and he comes up to her and says, Catherine Brewster, come with me. And she says, no, uh, I am here for your protection. He grabs her. She fights off. Security guards get involved. He tosses them off easily. She runs. Little chase scene of Arnold going after Catherine Brewster and her trying to get away from him. And then the TX shows up. Moment where the TX... Uh, tries to shoot at her. Arnold grabs her, shields her with his body. Quick little Terminator fight, uh, finishing with Arnold, uh, since they're in the hospital, and this is part of why I put her there, Arnold throws the TX into an MRI machine, and the magnetics incapacitates her long enough for Arnold and Catherine to get away. He says again, I'm here for your protection, come on. They get outside, they get into the car, and now we can have a chase scene. Like, all Terminator movies so far need to have that chase scene, so fine, let them have the chase scene, except uh, it's at night, uh, and it's got a fucking score. I cannot emphasize enough. That is so important. They get away. The Terminator is driving. Catherine demands an explanation of what's happening. The Terminator speaks, but the voice that comes out is hers, is older hers. And coming out of the Terminator's like mouth, it says, Catherine, mm -hmm. when you were 12 years old, you something, something that you've never told anyone before. I know this because I'm you, and I'm recording this message on January blah, 2000, whatever. The thing you're looking at is a machine called a Terminator. It was built to kill humans, but I've reprogrammed this one to protect you. It'll follow your orders. It'll answer your questions. Use it to survive, Catherine. The future of the human race depends on you. The message ends. Catherine sits, stunned for a moment. Oh, uh, uh, and, and finally she says, tell me what the hell is going on. And now we cut to somewhere else, some bar someplace. And a man is sitting at the bar having a beer, and he sees on the news is playing footage from the attack at the hospital. And he sees on the news, in this footage, Arnold, and he sees Arnold protecting Catherine from the TX. And the man stares at it, stunned, puts his beer down, gets up, leaves. Come back uh, to uh, Arnold and Catherine... I'm g I've gotten rid of the, the, the I'm getting rid of the fiance, by the way. Like I almost, I really wanted to keep the fiance just to have the scene of, of the T X <laughs> turning around in bed. I just love that scene so much. But but uh no, I'm getting rid of um so come back to Arnold and Catherine and and she's asking about judgment day. She's expressing some disbelief. They get to the cemetery, they go into the mausoleum where Sarah Connor's grave is. Who's Sarah Connor? She's the mother of John Connor. Uh, leader of the future resistance, blah, blah, blah. Arnold pulls out the coffin, reveals the, the weapons. Catherine's amazed. Uh, make a little point of going, oh my God, is that a rocket launcher? Uh, and, and, and then there's back, like most, there's guns in there, but there's also, like more importantly, there's a rocket launcher, there's explosives. There's things that'll be useful against a Terminator, as we said. Um, and most of them are sort of like bagged up. As Most of them are bagged up as though meant to be grabbed on the go, just in case you need to get them quickly. Because uh, why would they just all be loose? Now the cops show up because, again, he just rampaged through a hospital uh, and someone's been tracking him. The cops show up. Arnold grabs the minigun, not all the other ones, just the minigun, goes out and fucking mows them down. And Catherine is horrified and demands why he just killed all of them. I thought you were programmed to kill people. 
No, I am programmed to protect you. Now the TX and 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 they and they talk about this, uh, argue uh, about this a little bit, um, and and you know, and he can say, no, my only program is to protect you. All other things are secondary. And the TX shows up, and we have the moment where Arnold shoots the TX a bunch with no great effect. The TX blasts Arnold with the hand cannon. Arnold is down. The TX approached Catherine. Catherine trips and falls, and she's paralyzed by fear. The TX is standing up uh, over her aiming the cannon at her, charging up again, and suddenly the TX is blasted by a rocket and goes flying back. Catherine looks up, and here's John Connor. And he says, we all know what he says. He says, come with me if you want to live. I'm getting that fucking line in there. It's important. Um, <laughs> and they go to check on Arnold. Arnold is reviving uh, enough, that is, is, is like, like still a little slow, uh, uh, they get in, and, and as they're getting in the car, the TX is coming back. John has John has clearly grabbed like the the bags that were in that thing, um, and he and he goes and he throws like he takes some sort of explosive thing. He throws two of them because the TX dodges one, gets hit by the other one. He's basically anticipated that something like that might happen and blasts back. They get in the car. John's driving. Catherine's in the passenger. Arnold's in the back. They hit the road. They're on the road not long before the TX is behind them on a motorcycle, one of the cops' motorcycles is catching up and 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 of course while they're driving we'll have the little moments of 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 John of John like saying like okay so you're not the one that that from when I was a kid what the hell are you, you come off an assembly line correct Catherine's going what are you who is this what's going on and John, and and John's saying you can't be here we we stopped judgment day we we stopped all this happening um and now the TX is 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 showing up again and coming after them Little bit of a chase. Finally, John slams on the brake so that the TX hits into them from behind, knocks off the motorcycle. The TX is slammed against the back windshield. Arnold punches through the glass, knocks it off, and now they have time to get away. Again, all of this is just to... I want to introduce John in a way that makes him actually capable. Like, all everything that we, we were talking about. He's a guy who is like, yeah, he's coming in uh, for, for action mode. Um... And, uh, and John turns to Catherine and says, I'm John Connor. What's happening to you right now? Same thing happened to me when I was 13. So you must be somebody important in the future, huh? She goes, yeah, yeah, I guess so. And John laughs a little bit, goes, come with me if you want to live. I want always wanted to say that. My dad said that to my mom. And now they talk a bit. And, and, uh, and they have the moment of, you shouldn't exist. We stopped Judgment Day. And Arnold says, no, you postponed it. The creation of an artificial intelligence and its reaction is inevitable. And say that instead of saying Judgment Day is inevitable. Mm -hmm. John's furious. They worked so fucking hard to stop it. Ever since then, he's been staying off the grid, keeping so nobody could find them. And Arnold says, yes, that's why Skynet sent the TX after Catherine instead. She's your second to command, and without her, your children can't be born. And now we have the moment, oh, wait, what? you just told us that we're going to be married, and we literally just met. Okay, that's weird. Um, and we can also have here the same uh, revelation that uh, that 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 Arnold killed John in the future. Um, they have the scene where John asks what the TX's other targets are. Arnold lists them off, including Catherine's father. Uh, reveals who the father is and uh, the role in the creation of Skynet, and also that he survives the initial blast and helps form the initial resistance. I think it's important to say that because one other thing that we forgot to say was a problem in in the the initial movie is why would she be going after him? He starts Skynet. They didn't give a reason for why she'd be trying to kill him. He is like he's, he's the guy who forms Skynet. She should be helping him. But no, the important thing is that he survives. Uh, uh, and, I have and, notes about that. Oh, do you? Okay, <laughs> cool, sure. Um, now, John insists, oh, maybe if we get there in time, we can stop everything. Catherine insists, no, we have to save uh, my father. Come on, we, we, we have the scene where they, they convince him to go. Um, and at the military base, we can be cutting in some scenes uh, very, very similar. Like, like I, think it, I think the stuff with the military base can be relatively similar um, um, to what it was uh, in, in the initial thing with... Uh, with um, you know, with him really resisting the idea of starting Skynet up, not not because there's a virus, because the idea that Skynet is the virus, even though Sky, Skynet's been causing the virus before Skynet's actually been activated, 
I don't quite get that. Like, either it's activated or it's not. Either it's activated enough to create this amazing virus or it's not. Um, it's simply that they have this, they have this amazing uh, computer program, Skynet, that uh, everyone else in the military and the president really wants to implement, and he's the guy being like, "No, let's not do this. This is this is a bad idea." Um, and finally, uh, they, they they do, and everything's going haywire. And somebody suggests, "Hey, maybe we should get to Crystal Creek in case uh, in case there's like really an attack going on." Um, the TX shows up, Arnold and crew shows up, and it goes largely the same way, except except that. While Arnold is fighting the TX, which again, keep that fight, that fight is great, John and Catherine are able to save a few other military personnel while taking down some of the killer robots. They're not necessarily able to, to they're not able to save uh, 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 the father, to uh, Catherine's father, but they're able to save a couple others. Because what's important here is that there's others who will survive this moment who actually see John Take, like doing some stuff and taking charge, We're establishing uh, that other people actually see him uh, being a leader here. Um, and Catherine's father tells him to get to Chris Greek uh, as he's dying. And so instead of getting into a, a, a plane, uh, like that little two-person plane, like a few of them, including a few of these other military personnel, they can get into a helicopter and go. Uh, and... And we have, and, and and again, like there can be there there can be moments here where you know John is coming up with innovative ways of of using the various technologies and using whatever cover they have to take out these machines. He he can use the Terminator, get behind the Terminator, and use it to cover him while he mows down another machine with it with a gun, stuff like that. Um, and they get to to Crystal Creek, and it, and again, a lot of this can be can be largely the same. Uh, we can have the, uh, the 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 TX finally get killed in largely the same way. Uh, keep that magnet scene uh, that made sense of uh, of of uh, keeping it back like that. Um, and and they get there, and uh, and they get to Crystal Creek, and they get there, and again, it's John, it's Catherine. Uh, and it's the couple of military personnel that they managed to keep and survive, and they have the moment of, oh my god, it, it, it's nothing, there's nothing here, there's nothing but us surviving. And, and it can, and, and, uh, and there's a moment of John and Catherine, like, apart from the others, as John is basically starting to break down and going, I can't, like, I can't believe it's, it's, it's happening. We tried so hard to stop it. This is, this is crazy. And then they hear that the attacks are, are starting. Um, and she basically tells him, like, you know, get up, be strong, whatever's happening. We have to fight it now. Um, and so John can go and then the ending scene can actually be, again, very similar to what it was in the film, except John's got a little more strength in his voice. He, there, these other folks have actually seen him taking charge and doing stuff. And then the final, um, the final uh, uh, voiceover is 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 her speaking, uh, in, in, in 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 instead of him. And other and, and again, largely the same stuff of the fight starts now, and uh, and 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 we will not stop. Uh, and, and that business. But so, so again, so, 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 so yeah, the point being what we were saying with one of the main, main, main issues of this movie was John Connor is just useless. I feel like so much of it can be saved by just reversing that. So I, I've, I've decided I just want to see that movie. Um, so I don't, I don't need a pitch. That was, that was pretty complete. Um, I want to see that film. I would like that film to be made. And, uh, <laughs> I, I was just like, oh, this is way better than my pitch. Oh, I really like that. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, that's fantastic. You know, actually, I'd really like to see that. I, I, it's so funny because I also recast or I, I changed her job, but I actually changed her job where I wanted her to kind of have an internship with her father to kind of have like, and, and I did, I actually had her working on like, like small robotics hands, like not like, like she's a college student. Um, her dad full, pulls a little s strings. She's very low level. Like she doesn't really know the full scope of what's happening on the base, but because of her dad, she has this internship at the base, which gives her access to the base. Right. So like for later on, that's kind of nice because, um, 
when they need to get on it, you know, it's it's not like you can just visit your family on secure secret basis. Um, but it's true. How did they get in there? <laughs> yeah, she just walked in and they were like, she was like, "Daddy," and they were like, "Oh yeah, it's his daughter." We always let yeah. It this is a totally secret thing for the government, but yeah, she could just walk in any time. She's his princess. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so, two other people. <laughs> yeah, just random. <laughs> but I had her, uh, in, in my imagining, it, I had her actually, like, working as an internship, very low level, working on some robotics hands. You know, she's, like, really into, like, those robots fights that used to be on the sci-fi network. <laughs> and, like, things like that. Like, she was, like, very, like, she's very into that, which is why I thought it'd be really funny if, when she meets the robot and realizes that, like, meets Arnold and me realizes that he's a robot, instead of automatically being, like, super frightened, being more, like, amazed and, like, poking at him and, oh, like, great. kind of, like, like, how do you work? Like, what, like, okay, so, like, what's your core made of? And, like, trying to, like, peel back the skin and having, like, the robot just be, like, she's such a weirdo kind of thing, but like in a totally robot kind of way, which would actually be kind of the humor, right? This very like straight man to like this very like, oh my God, I want to take you apart. It's like, we don't have time for you to take me apart because I need to save your life and we have to go. And then like when the TX shows up, she's like, that's a robot too. You know, like, <laughs> so instead of being like, Yes, that's a robot, and it's about to kill you. She'd be like, oh, shit, it is. You know, she can kind of, like, run off. And I think that would be, like, very interesting to, like, like a an interesting opposite to John's, like, very much, like, I hate robots. Robots are evil. Like, I've been taught all this time to, like, fear technology. She knows technology. She knows robots. She She's building them. She's interested in building them. And then she realizes, like, oh, shit, like, they're there's like heavy downsides to some of this. And so I think that can also add like a, a tension to them later on um, because she can kind of like a lot of scientists kind of think that some of it is just absolutely fantastic. Like, you know what? I am going to keep the fiance because I really liked that moment. <laughs> So I'm going to keep the fiance. I'm just going to have it happen a little earlier in the movie so that he dies a little earlier so you can build a little grief and romantic I, bonding later. I like that we both had the the same reason for wanting to keep the fiance and only that reason. <laughs> I mean, he's got like three scenes. Like, if one of those scenes is the good one, like, who's, who's surprised? I mean, honestly, like, those scenes, like, his scenes are pretty good. Like, the minute you realize that, like, you know, I mean, I could totally get a, like, he could just be a boyfriend. He doesn't even have to be a fiance because we don't have to do that scene in the beginning where she's talking to her dad about, and they're clearly registering for their wedding. Um,. Like, that doesn't have to happen, but he could just be, like, her boyfriend, like, her live-in boyfriend kind of thing. Because I, I imagine that, in my brain, we're sticking with 23, so she's a college student. She's, you know, she's got this internship, that kind of thing. So she's still, like, that age. Uh, John is still a badass. John has a network of people that he stays with underground. John works out all the time. He always has a knapsack with everything he needs, like his essentials. Um, he does fiddle around with, with stuff like, but it's mostly <laughs> explosives, <laughs> but he, he is good at fixing things. He's still good at fixing machines when he needs to, because he has to be able to like fiddle with things because he wants to know how to take things apart too. So he can meet her at the level of like, like he could technically build something, but he doesn't want to, but he has to know how to take them apart. So, um, and then I'd keep the last half of the, the film pretty much the same. I'd also get rid of the weird makeout thing, like the reference to their childhood. Like I would just, yeah. you know, just yeah. like the pitch. That was so mm -hmm. weird. And, and the fact that they talked about it more than once and that John like didn't remember it, but she remembered it so well. And then, and I was like, well, I guess like the next day, like 
Arnold did show up, so that would be pretty traumatizing to a person. Like, you might forget things that happened in your life. But also, it just kind of felt like he was negging her. Like, oh, I don't remember you, but you remember me? Wow, I must have meant something to you. And I was like, ew. Um, so I did like, dude, not you, like that. Yeah, you kissed me and then just didn't come to school ever again. That, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's why I remembered you. So yeah, I would I would basically like change around their stories that way. But I really I really liked the opening you said. I, I liked your movie completely. I my tweaks are just my tweaks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I want I I for, I've, one thing I forgot to say is also is is just uh, the reason that that John like came knew where they were and came to the uh, to the to, to the Sarah Connor place was just why the fuck wouldn't he know that all the weapons were there? Yeah, I, yeah. I figured that's why. Yeah. Yeah, she uh, honestly, his mom would have told. Him. Like, I was like, oh, his mom's friends took care. Of I was like, first of all, Sarah Connor has a network of like acquaintances. She doesn't have close friends. Yep. <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, was she on some beach? Like, like hanging out with her? Like, like she's all of a sudden a hippie? Like, I don't know. Like, I just imagined her. She was like in Baja and like living on the beach somewhere, and she lived just long enough to find out that the world wasn't going to end. And passed away and all of her friends celebrated her life in a fire of visual like no that's not sarah connor are you fucking kidding me her kid took her cremated her he was the only one who showed up he sent out coded messages to all of her network to let them know that sarah passed and then that he would be dropping by when he could and then he basically went and filled her mausoleum with the guns and <laughs> went on with his life hiding the way he's always hidden, changing yeah. his identity, having that kind of stuff happen, building an army secretly for the possibility that they were wrong, because that's how Sarah was. She always believed that she could be wrong, and so would he. Yeah. I, li I, li I, like, I like the idea of her being, <clears throat> of, of, uh, of, of Catherine being at the military base, like in, in, some, in some work capacity. Um, and 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 fiddling with robots, yeah, I, li I, li I like that yeah. a lot. because she would also know how the base, like she would have access at least to the lower level, but she would also know who to steal from to get access to other things. She could also, you could also have a really nice moment with her and her dad when she realizes how dangerous Skynet is, like a confrontation. Like, are you really going to activate this just because? you know, they think it's appropriate or because, like, there's this external threat. I mean, like Kay said, there, this is a military kind of, you know, operation. So is there outside forces that are making them turn this on? Yeah, like, Dad, this, you know it's not perfect. You know that there's something wrong in the coding. You know that it it's not right. Like, you know that there's a potential. And I just talked to this guy, and he could be like, what guy? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, some crazy-ass, you know, kid. I mean, you might even, like, if you want to do parallels, maybe have put John inside of a mental institution, too. Like, have that be a parallel. So that, like, because, I mean, after his mom dies, what protection does he have? And if he's seeing signs everywhere, what if something happens and he does something that's, like, super weird and he gets locked up for a little bit? Sure, but then how does he get out and so how does he get involved in the story then? Oh, well, you know, I do like a good uh, uh, jailbreak, so <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it could be the same thing. He could see Arnold on the news from the mental institution and, and mm -hmm. then decide to break. Because until this moment, he's been like, fine, maybe I'll just stay here. And then he's like, oh. I could have broken out any time. Now I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like three meals a day, yeah. which would be him fulfilling the role of his mom. Yeah. 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 yeah that works. That works. Like too. three meals a day, comfortable bed. If you do with three they hots and a cot. Yeah. <laughs> and he could just work out all the time, and he's built a really good network inside the prison. Yeah. He's... <laughs> yep. I like that <laughs> better it. than uh, than my transient in a bar, actually. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're like they're they're both fine. Like, yeah. the, like the thing is, this is all better than what we got. So. <laughs> Case is like as long as it's better. I, I like both of these a lot. Um, I took a slightly different tact in that I can like I was really hung up on the whole. Why did they go back to this time? Like why? Like why did time just get shifted? Why did Judgment Day just get pushed? Like not 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 just that like. 
is it going to be inevitable? But like, why are the details so similar? Why are all the things that like happened in the pr- the first Judgment Day of 1997 playing out the same way now eight years later, mm-hmm. um, it, without more substantial changes? Uh, and so that just kept on like floating with me while I was watching this movie. So my take on this is assuming this movie comes out in 2003 and is set in 2005. <clears throat> what if the TX came back in 1997? Oh, so I, I realized as I was is, like, is that the same year? Is that the to... same year as T2? No, the T2 is set in 1995. Right. Okay. Sorry. So this is this 1997 is the date of judgment day. Like, of the right, actual apocalypse right, right, that was supposed right. to happen, like, which is why the naming convention makes this all weird and hard to discuss. Uh, but so what if 1995 plays out the way that we saw in T2? And then in 1997, two Terminators were sent back. And that what I'm thinking is that these were ones that were sent back at the same time as the Judgment Day or rather as the T2 Terminators went back. So it's same situation where they're trying to hit multiple spots. Like like what Sam was saying, it's why they, do they only send one? In this case, they actually sent ones to different points on the timeline to try to make sure things happened appropriately. The T-1000 that was sent back to 1997 found that Judgment Day didn't occur. And so since 1997, its mission has been to get things back on track. Mm. And here's my thought. The T-1000 versus the TX... The T-1000 wasn't insufficiently scary because it was it didn't have enough weapons on it. The The one thing that it lacked was that it wasn't good enough at dealing with humans. Um, the T-800 was even worse, and like, but it, it was getting better, but it didn't understand things like when it, as a cop, went to go interrogate uh, teenagers, those teenagers lied because he was a cop. Uh, and they just didn't understand those things. Uh not all of them. Like, like so there's there's kids there. No, the civilians right and stuff. Like, yeah. some pe- some people answered appropriately, but like, like John's friend was like, "Hey, man, a cop's looking for you. You gotta, you gotta get the fuck out of here." Like, the the point is that like he's he's he thinks that things are supposed to be the way that they're officially on paper, uh, and doesn't understand the the idiosyncrasies. So I'm saying that this one has been living since 1997 up till 2005, integrating itself with humanity and getting smarter. And that its mission is actually to create Skynet because at the end of of T2, they destroy all of the research that allowed for Skynet to occur. Like that's how they stop judgment day. They prevent all the technology from being developed. So now this one has infiltrated everything as uh, to push it forward. But here's where we get, it's important. We don't know who it is. Nice. The movie should be. So how do we, the audience know that it's there? So the movie starts with various government controlled squads in very like Patriot Act kind of like counterterrorism things being sent into homes and gunning down families. And those families are the people who were supposed to be on John's list, like his like group of like uh, compatriots. Uh, And at first, it's just these random murders occurring. So this is going to have shades of the original Terminator now where just random families being like taken down. But instead of being by a Terminator, it's it's government death squads. They're they're terrorists. Like they're they're gonna they're, they're like they're being sent in. Like we have all the we have all the evidence, and we and we should have a red herring in this program, who we think is the person doing it, and then it turns out to be Kate's dad. Uh, and, and when and when, when you say that there are people on John's list, which or not John? Like I mean, like the list of like his like his associates le- in the in the future, the, like the ones that the TX like kills the resistance in fighters. right, yeah, Got it. The, the, okay. the resistance fighters in the future. Um, and this one has just been slowly working their way through the list. It's been identifying who could be potential threats, uh, you know, um, a little bit of like the Captain America Winter Soldier thing where it's like anyone who could be a, res- a resistance fighter in the future, they're trying to identify and kill. So some of these were ones that they knew from records and others were ones that the, the change in circumstances they just figured out were, were different. Meanwhile, um, I, I like this idea to have Kate be the POV character. I think that's a, I think that's actually really good. I'm going to steal that for this one because I think it works really well because it helps then <laughs> justify John's position because, and I realize this is where it becomes really similar to Genesis. Uh, when John shows up, he's with the Terminator, uh, the T-101 that was sent back into 1997 linked up with him and they've been underground building their network. Huh. And like I said, that happens in Genesis, so I, I do realize that this is, that part's not that novel. So in 97, 
a T-1000 came back and a T-800 came back and the yep. T-1000 started infiltrating the government and the T-800 started building a network with John. Yep. Cool. Uh, and so at this point now, we, we just think that this like very attractive businesswoman who's like with a military contractor working with this, uh, with this all is just like a person like, and maybe she's like, like I, what I would say is she hands files of like this is new information, new intel on potential like domestic terrorists and so forth. It's like, oh, this would be like this would be a good opportunity for us to test out these defense drones and like that this guy keeps on pushing. And so we think that he is the Terminator or at the very least, he's the bad guy of the movie. Um, and then it turns out that actually she's been manipulating this whole him this whole time. Mm. She is the Terminator. Yeah. And so that should really come out somewhere at about the halfway point in the movie, like where she's on site and that's when it's revealed that she has integrated into her body weapons uh like projectile weapons uh that she's been developing for these like terminator drones because i I, like you i i like the third act i think that it's so cool having basic ass like og terminators as like drones that are under control but this is stuff she was developing so I, i like it like kate's like confused she doesn't understand why her classmates are getting killed or like they keep hearing about stuff like that. Like it's not just her classmates, but like it's weird that like four of them have, you know, like it's just enough where it's like, that's strange. And it's the, the people that John had personal connections with. Like it's, it, it starts building up that way. Um, and so maybe like John can play kind of the Reese role where he's like trying to like find Kate or like find people. Like he keeps being too late at first and like people keep dying. Um, because the T-101 would have the same records of, like, people who are known associates. Like, once the first two happen, like, he would have access to that same list. So he would try to, like, go identify them. Um, and, you know, we can have a scene with, with Kate, like, where it becomes a road movie because they ca- kidnap her. But instead of being afraid of a single Terminator, they're actually being actively pursued by the U.S. military. Right. And I have a I, – there's a note in uh, – like when I was uh, reading up on like the production history that they wanted like a bit of a travel thing going on. Cause that happened in T2 as well. And also in T1, like where there's a bunch of driving around from location to location. So you can kind of still have that kind of vibe here. Uh, and then we get the, the reveal that the person that we thought was a bad guy was actually just this manipulated um, like military official who is in fact Kate's dad. Maybe that could even be the way, like if, like maybe when he finally like sees the file on the person, like maybe he he never actually looked at it. He sees the file on the person who who was sent to be killed. That's where we get the reveal about that part, and he tries to bring her in. But we get the this is why they're mm. back at the base, and the um and then the TX sort of makes makes a play more directly uh, as she interfaces with their the computer system that they've been developing that she was building so that she basically becomes the mother of Skynet. And that rather than just being like, oh, it's inevitable, like literally there's a Terminator trying to set things back what they see as right, yeah. like trying to correct the timeline. And and that's actually, that's a parallel to the paradox of the first one where the soldier sent back becomes the father of John Connor, which, it, and, and now like the Terminator sent back becomes the mother of Skynet. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I would love if they figure it out because they find footage, like maybe they were in her office or something, and they find footage of her arriving that she has like suppressed, but she still has on file, like in her computer. Because hmm. she's sentimental, or something, <laughs> you know, or maybe they they find uh, they find a different source that she forgot to wipe. Um, but they're trying, like, they identify what she looks like based on like video. I I, I just think it's like we've seen that the. the time travel sequence so many times how cool would it be if this time it's like we're watching the security camera footage of it of the time travel oh yes okay yeah yeah yeah, well, yeah. i'm i mean i think it's fine for a robot to actually be kind of sentimental about keeping records actually <laughs> <laughs> well especially if this is a robot that has spent years learning to be more human yeah and that's and, and notice well that's one thing humans do is they keep things this mm-hmm. is what I keep. Records. Yeah. Uh, I mean, All I mentioned the, the 11 thing, but like, if, <laughs> uh, maybe the first four years that she was back here, um, she wasn't very good. She was like working at it. She was like trying to get better. Um, 9-11 happens. All of a sudden, there's a change in the way the military works. There's a, a heightened paranoia. That's the moment where she like inserts herself, like where she's able to like get better grounds. Like, 
not saying I want to make this all a 9-11 movie, but like the the increased importance of the war on terror has actually led to us developing automated drones that we can send out to go murder things. That's yeah. exactly the scenario we're talking about. Yeah. Here. Well, and again, this allows for like scenes that are kind of like 24 of people being brought in with like bags of their head and tortured by government officials and like have that be a bad thing because they're being manipulated by a killer robot. I mean, on, on some level though, um, that whole first concept, if we're coming back, that could be a very dark sitcom too. This is, that's comedy gold of her learning how to human. <laughs> 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 Not that that's the tone you want to go with, but I'm just saying that could be its own separate thing of just And, and like, just occasionally screwing up and being like, I got to kill this person now. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> just being like, all right, well, I guess it's time to bring out my blowtorch. And then she just burns their face off because that was the most amazing part. And then Wanda Maximoff comes in and is like, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> But I think this works because we still get a, we can still call it a TX to distinguish it from a T-1000. She has upgraded herself a lot over eight years. Yeah. Um, maybe she does have an endoskeleton that she can eject and is a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> she needs to. Uh, and it's got all the weapons built into it. Like maybe, you know, we can give her all the things that we want to give her to show like, hey, this is new. This is the new hotness. But at the same time, this keeps the timeline and like the time travel components logical without having to go into just doing dark fate doing the like all right well it's inevitable but now that now the details are going to be different yeah i like the idea of of in if just like, like like instead of all the talk of this is your destiny <clears throat> simply showing well no this is the paradox that makes that paradox that makes that happen and we're just gonna are we're not even gonna like are we gonna have a discussion on oh would any of this happened if you hadn't come back no we're not that's what happened and that's what we're going with mm-hmm. and i like yeah i like that parallel a lot uh, also, I have a note, and I don't know if this would be a thing that we would do necessarily, but it would be fun to see. I feel like Arnie should be like burned away down past his like neckline. Um, I-, I think that like one of the fun things about the T eight hundred specifically is how much, how visceral the damage they take is in a way that the T one thousand and the TX don't have. Like the the first Terminator, you see how badly it gets beaten up, and like every time Arnie gets beaten up really badly. Um, I think it'd be really fun if, like, by the end of it, we are really just dealing with, like, for marketability standpoints or, like, purposes, uh, his upper head, like, the, his shoulders and up, like, so we still have his face. Um, but, like, really see, like, he's almost completely stripped down to machine by the end of the movie. Leave him his feet just so he can walk better. But, yeah. Agree. Yeah, yeah. Other than don't, that. Yeah, don't that do that great. to him. Sounds odd. Well, I'm just talking about, like, you know, once... In Terminator 1, like, once he's lost everything but the robots, I was like, okay, you clearly walk better if you have human feet. Uh, but, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, that's, that, yeah, I like that. Yeah, you're right, because, like, and they, they they actually don't let him get beat up as much in uh, in Terminator 3, and I wonder how much of that is just, like, Arnold being like, no, I don't want to spend that much time in a fucking makeup chair anymore. Um, yeah, but in this case, it's just a green suit that he's yeah, wearing. Yeah, exactly. And then they CGI in, like, the robot. And you could have it, like, dripping blood and stuff. Like, you could have it be really gross. Nice. Yeah. I like that. It's a good pitch. You should, you should, you should get that made. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like I said, I don't know how much of this is like too similar to either uh, Genesis because it's been a while since I saw Genesis, and I, I thought it was fairly forgettable. Uh, and then uh, Dark Fate, I just haven't seen. Well, maybe the whole point is that if the stuff that Genesis did had happened in this one instead, they would it would have managed to actually have been better. I don't know. I haven't yeah. seen Genesis. I can't say. I think one of the problems with Genesis is that they try to be um, way too affectionate towards both of the first two movies with a totally new cast, aside from Arnold. Uh, like, it's it's Amelia Clark as uh, um, as Sarah Connor. And then it is Jai Courtney as Reese. Uh, which is weird, because Jai Courtney's in way better, like, not better shape per se, but, like, he's, he's m- way more muscly. Uh, than than Kyle Reese was okay. uh, in the first movie. All all of it's and, weird. But it, does it take place in the same year? There's time travel that happens at multiple points, okay. so they keep going back to different times. Okay. Uh, but at one point, they send back the T eight hundred model to meet up with like a child version of Sarah Connor, and then that one ages up with her, which is why Arnold's older. 
because the fleshy side is aged. Oh. Uh, but she's super prepared, mm. even though she didn't go through the in- events of Terminator 1, because this Terminator was basically her dad. The ideas sound like good pitches. It just didn't end up being a good movie, which is the, the problem here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I think that the big problem there is that it, because it was recasting pretty much everything, um, like, and it was all the parts that we actually kind of care about, like Linda Hamilton as Sarah Connor. It's weird not having her be Sarah Connor, but no one cares about John Connor. Ah. Like, while Edward Furlong, sure, there's a big age gap and we, we only had one movie with him. Um, and he's been played by different actors every time, including the flash forwards. Yeah. So we have seen various John Connors. We can recast him if we want it to be Nick Stahl in this movie or someone else. That one doesn't matter as much. But Linda Hamilton not being Sarah Connor feels real bad. And also Reese being recast also feels real bad. Partly because you're just like, man, I like that guy. Throw him some work. I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, it's yeah. He's in Tombstone. Come on. An <laughs> alien. <laughs> Yeah, so that's mine. You know, for uh, as always, I, I I tend to like find areas where I'm like, I, th- this one bugged me from a, a sci-fi nerd standpoint. Yeah, and, oh, uh, focused yeah, on that. Uh, but but Leo, I really loved your take on John being kind of a badass. I, I really dig that, and I really dig the idea. I, I love your pitch of the MRI machine on it. Like that's really cool. It's the mm. only reason to have it in a hospital. It's just, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> uh, which is, which, and I get like, like late then, you know, later on when he, he does the magnet thing in the military base, part of it is like the you know, same sort of thing. Okay. That works. But like, how are we going to get rid of her here? That's what we got there. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. yeah. So stuff like that. But just in general, I feel like we kind of all agree. John needed to have more purpose yes. in yeah. that movie. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it just didn't kind of work timeline wise. The score is just, or the lack thereof is really bad. Yeah. Like, yeah. Fundamentally, most of the stuff in this movie is fine. It just doesn't stick the landing. Like nothing about it is exciting. And I, there's no reason to go rewatch this when you could just go rewatch Terminator two. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Just watch Terminator two. I really, I really, <laughs> ju- I really just want to play the music of the Terminator two fight scene right now. Cause it's in my head and I just want to mm-hmm. hear it. <laughs> It's uh, honestly like I th- I think like if Terminator Two like I said if I thought if Terminator Two didn't exist it'd probably be an okay movie like it's lazy like there's a lot of just you know but there are things that like I said like they actually made a reason why Arnold is in this film and and the boyfriend scenes all of the boyfriend scenes are pretty good except for the shopping for stuff and I thought the acting was okay it's just John. John, John needed to have more of a purpose, needed to kick it into high gear by the second act. In the first act, he could wallow a little bit, you know. Yeah. Uh, fine. You know, he's got gifted child syndrome. He's got the one syndrome when the one isn't needed. All right, fine. But then you realize that it is happening, and then you, your instincts, what you were raised on, should have kicked in. Yeah. In fact, and you should be did. a little bit relieved at times, just being like, oh, fuck, it, I wasn't just crazy. Like, yeah. like, oh, yeah. yeah. Finally, finally, I get to fight the machines. Yeah, and be horrified by it. Like, horrified by that relief. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Feel actually, guilty. What a, great, yeah. what a great scene that would be, is having the guy talking about how i'm relieved and i'm heart like like i'm 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 horrified at how happy i am this is kind of happening yeah as yeah. as uh, much I mean, as we would all love to go out and shoot zombies if you're doing it it means bad things have happened yeah this the script really plays this off as like john's just kind of like yeah it's happening you're back He's a robot. That's who he is. Like, it's very, like, blasé about everything. But it's like, you're back. Oh, wait, you're not, you're not my robot. You're, oh, okay, you're, you're a different Terminator. Okay, but you're here to save me, right? Here to protect me? Oh, wow, okay. All right, so it's happening again. When is it happening? When is it, what are we doing? What, wh- how, okay, what's the plan, chief? You know, like, yep. he yep. should actually be a little excited because, like, I mean, like, the thing that, like, really, I one of the things, or one of the things that really strikes you about T2 is the relationship that this kid builds with the Terminator that has come back to save him. That's yeah. why it's Free Willy, right? Because this is, like, this almost like his best friend being melted down to sacrifice himself. I know now why you cry. 
Yeah. Something I can never do. So like, there should be something about <laughs> about seeing him that makes this John both happy and sad and like excited, but also like really anxious because then this means that he and his mom failed. Right? So there should be slight yeah. disappointment because we fucking failed. And but like at so the much, same time, yeah. I got to see my friend again. Like this is my friend. Oh, you're not my friend, but you're just like my friend. Oh man, like this is this feels normal to me. This is my normal. Like that other life I was living, just doing construction odd jobs under different names. That was just like what I was doing till I got back to this, which is my normal. Which is fight, waiting to fight the machines. Yeah. Like, John's a severely fucked up person. And he should be. Well, it's a parallel to, you know, I've, I've never, you know, I never served in the military, but I've seen enough movies and TV shows where they have someone talk about missing the combat and wanting to get back mm -hmm. there because that's where life makes sense. Yeah. Because that, you know. And that's mm -hmm. where it's structured, you know? So I, that that's... That's the part of this film that is, that's missing the most, is that, like, John's motivations, John's emotions tied, even from the second film, like, those things don't go away. I mean, think of how most of our generation just shops based on nostalgia, <laughs> which is proof of, like, the fact that, like, now I can buy something that's really cute and Star Wars or Star Trek. Like, I can buy a dress. That you, wasn't around when I was younger because people didn't shop based on their nostalgia. You, you mean like how I shot a SpongeBob mockumentary? That is exactly. now streaming? Like, right. <laughs> Where can people find that again? <laughs> yeah, I, was, I think that's a pretty good point to like get back to. Like, I yeah. think we're wrapped up on talking about this. So, yeah. Leo, thank you for coming thank on. You. Yeah. Uh, Give your plugs. So, yeah. So, so again, uh, go on Amazon Prime and uh, check out SpongeBob DocuPants. Uh, I think it's like 10 episodes. I'm in three of them. Uh, I'm also, uh, if you're a History Channel fan, uh, I'm in an episode of uh, the season of The Foods That Built America, uh, uh, which is all about, you know, history stuff about the creation of foods. I'm in, season, I'm in episode six of season two. I play, I don't play the guy who created Fritos. But I play the guy who bought the recipe for Fritos and then used that to build a chip empire and eventually created Cheetos. And it's uh, that was that was that, that was that was fun. That was actually something that was supposed to shoot back it like like la last April and then the world shut down and we managed to get it shot in October. That was the first thing that I actually shot uh, uh, once things started actually being able to happen again. And uh, I just uh, uh, got cast. I'm gonna be recording something uh, next week or maybe the week after a podcast called The Danger Chronicles uh, with Archipelago Studios, which is, uh, the, it's going to be a, uh, it's a scripted podcast. It's going to be um, basically a, a parody of, they do parodies, I guess, of, uh, of, of, of comic book and superhero stuff. And this is going to be a parody of the Snyder Cut. I am going to be playing Steppenwolf. Uh, in uh, in a parody uh, recording of the Snyder Cut, which is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so I'll be doing that, boys. And uh, yeah, and I got a meeting some uh, uh, later this week with uh, some filmmaker uh, that I auditioned for like a while ago, and I didn't get it, but he's got in touch with me about something else. So I got something else that I'll, that I'll hopefully be working on soon. Uh, but yeah. Now, if people wanted to... Uh keep up with you where can they find you on like social media uh i am on uh twitter at leo goodman one and i am on instagram at l goodman 1981 and now you can guess what year i was born and <laughs> <laughs> right but is it actually filmed three years earlier than that yeah it's... <laughs> uh sam if people wanted to find you where can they find you they can find me here but if they have complaints, they can find Case at... <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter, at Case Aiken. You can find the podcast on Twitter, at Another Pass. You can find all the stuff that we're doing at CertainPOV.com. There's so much stuff going on. We've got great shows. We've got a wonderfully vibrant Discord community. We are currently having this call on Discord. Uh, but, you know, you can just come hang out. We, we've got channels talking about memes, uh, talking about spoilers for... 
for cool Marvel stuff that's been coming out or Star Wars stuff. Like, lots of fun discussion. If you like Mass Effect, there's a huge amount of Mass Effect on the Reignite section Ooh. because uh, that that's a great podcast. I'll, you know what? I've said it out loud, so I'll, I'll plug that one. Uh, Reignite is a great show. MJ and Matt have been going through the Mass Effect video games and doing it kind of like a book club format, really sort of getting into why their characters made the choices that they do on what is a really interesting branching RPG. Uh, so if you like Mass Effect, check that out. And if you don't like Mass Effect, it might sell you on it. I actually played that franchise because they sold me so hard on it uh, just by listening to the episode. So that's a good show. Check it out. Again, it's at certainpov.com. Sam, take us home. Next time on Another Pass, we'll be doing Highlander 2, The Quickening. But until then, if you like this, pass it on. Thanks for listening to Certain Point of View's Another Pass podcast. Don't miss an episode. Just subscribe and review the show on iTunes. Just go to certainpov.com. Craig, um, they're they're murdering people, but um, uh, did did Craig come back because I said robots were good? Is that why? <laughs> 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 All right. If, if the story is the cold open, this should be the after credits. <laughs> this is the rise of the machines. <laughs> Craig has risen again. So, <laughs> um, sorry, now my pitch is absolutely everywhere because I cannot stop laughing about my our robot. Do you like comic book movies, particularly Marvel films? Because if you do, hi, my name's Ian. I hang out with Mitch. We take a journey into mystery every single Wednesday. You can watch us live. You can listen to us later in the car when you're by yourself and you don't want to tell people you listen to podcasts about Marvel movies. That's fine. No judgment. But we're here for you. We watched all the MCU. Now we're going through all the old ones. So buckle in. Mitch is going to take us there. Boom. That's your ad right there. CPOV. CertainPOV.com.